What's happening, guys? Just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a ship boozer, you get an extra episode every single week exclusive no one else gets to see it apart from the patreons and you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well that's what you get and on top of all of that you get access to the entire back catalog of the patreon episodes we've been doing that for like a year now there's loads of content there there's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk they only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shitloads of content for us, and you can only get it at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter. Boom. I've got you a present. Well, I mean, is this to add to the absolute bounty of stuff that you've given me for... The baby, which, by the way, guys, I mean, fucking stellar work all round. Finn, particularly, I know his sister helped. Carl got a lovely bunch of flowers. You've turned up with loads of kit. I mean, well, well done, guys. You're in your twenties, and you very, very, very. What well happened done. was you had a baby. Don't really remember, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been remembering just recently. And then I said to Sam, my girlfriend, I went, "Look, you're a woman. You know about babies." Right? That's yeah, legit. There's no, <laughs> literally no one can argue about that. So you all the sudden, and she did. You were a 20 something woman who's never had a baby, but you know about babies. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Inherently, they know what babies exactly. need. Exactly. So we ordered something, and it just it, it kept getting shipping delays. So we just cancelled it. And we were in town news then. I was like, do you know what? Next, do really good baby stuff. Let's just go to next and get a load of stuff. Bob on. Um, and because it had been a little bit of a while since the baby was born, what is it, six, seven months now? It's 22 years. 20. That's how it feels. That's how it feels. Just now. So um, I just made sure I got a bit extra. You fucking nailed it. You've all mm. nailed it. Well done, boys. Four. But you've got me a present. Well, I've got you and Laura a present. Together. Mm, I don't really believe thoughtful. it's a proper... Pre- like, <laughs> it is. No, it is. It really, really... evil in his no, no, eyes. <laughs> it's, it's, to be fair, I've he smashed t- it, yeah. I've told Carl what, what? it is. I've already told Carl what it is. Is it about sexy... Is it at all to relate related to sexy times? Slightly. Sla- Honestly. A little bit. I don't need help. So. She... I, she oh, mate, I'm ready to pound. I mean, she's not ready for me to pound. Right. And she wasn't before the fucking C-section. So, a, she's sexy at the moment. It's them big old milk teddies. I don't know whether you know about this, but in Ann Summers... <laughs> you can get like um you know this present's just for me <laughs> this is what's gonna happen right in on summers you can get like a a book of right. like gift vouchers gift vouchers that like so like what would happen is you would give it to laura on valentine's day i know right i know or she could give them to you and go right here's a book of gift vouchers and you go like right, a blowjob one- voucher yeah now i have heard of these yeah for about 15 to 20 years from one particular comedian in particular what you say you know the yeah yeah yeah. There's what what I can't say. I said in particular twice. That's really particular. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, yeah. The so the like the blowjob voucher. Yeah, so you'd be like this voucher. Use of, it whenever. Yeah, yeah, right. So <laughs> instead of going to Anne Summers, I've made you one. Yes, <laughs> the Adam Rowe sexy vouchers. So it is addressed to Dan and Laura. Right. Can I open it now? Yeah, I want you to open it. I want you to read it and let the listeners know where I've got you. So there you go. Happy baby. It would be a bit disappointing. Is that what you say? Happy baby? Yeah, it's a well-known... Happy baby (laughs) to you. Get out of the theatre! What are you doing? I'm just... You're checking for money? No. (laughs) It's just pound coin, isn't it? I'm 40 years old and every card... Congratulations on new baby. Fuck all. So you will notice that the card doesn't quite fit the envelope, and that's because I made it myself. Because uh, there was there was no card to go with the envelope, so I I bought envelopes and I bought cards. Have to second guess yourself. Do you know what this looks like to me? Effort. Yeah. Consideration. Okay. Now I'm going to go for the slightly uh, noncy opening of 
tearing the top Oh, no, I like that. What's, you like a bit of that? Depends what I'm opening. I think you know you're ready for the grave when you have a special letter opening knife. Like one of the founding fathers of America. That's yeah. how you yeah. open letters. <laughs> you open letters like Thomas Jefferson did. <laughs> <laughs> In my head, I was like, don't do George Washington because it's hack. <laughs> I, was, I was just trying to find Jefferson's name. See, that's where you Hamilton that, comes in helpful. It really I know does. Them all. You there's, know so much about the American there's, Revolution. There's Thomas Jefferson, it was Alexander after. Hamilton, there's George Washington. Tamuri Kitzbayer. Who? Tamuri Kitzbayer. The Mulligan Tire. Yeah, <laughs> there's the Tamuri Kitzbayer. Um, there's uh, Aaron Bear. <laughs> He was the fair. He was the second you, vice president. Are you really doing the actual ones? And I'm I, for once, I'm not taking it seriously. And you're like, no, Dan, this is actually the American Revolution, and it's not funny. Hercules Mulligan. He was good. Him. Hercules Mulligan. Yeah. What he did was he went and yeah. pretended to be on the British side, but was spying for the revolutionaries. Oh. And then one day he just started smashing rat. everyone's head in. Yeah. Yeah. There was uh, Stee. Yeah, he he was the Sparky for the first white. The white he was what the was first. Name? Stee. Stee what? I he was one of the first Stees, so he didn't have a surname. Do you reckon anyone? Because Stephen's quite an old name, isn't it? But do you reckon anyone back in like the sixteen hundreds was called Stee? No, no, probably no. not. Steve, maybe. Yeah, Steve no. O. <laughs> Steve O. Sixteenth <laughs> century Steve O. Yeah. <laughs> do you reckon anyone called David was called Dave? No. Or D Man, D Money, probably D. D money, yeah. D money. D money. <laughs> He's in Hamilton, isn't he? Yeah, D money. The he, was the, he was the third vice president. <laughs> D money. Treasurer. John Morris. Adams was the first oh, vice president. You <laughs> fucking bum, John Adams. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. He was any time I say this, he's one of the funniest cunts around. But anytime John Adams comes up, Adams like, no, it's not funny. It's John Adams. Who's Sam Adams? Sam he Adams. Makes the he makes beer. He and nobody's he involved. No. no. Oh. He isn't, no. He was like he was, because he First it. president was George Washington. G John Adams was his vice president. And then he was the second president, but he was really shit. So they fucked him off. Oh, Jefferson mate. became president. Could open, you, open it. Could, could you just stop this? Because I'm so moist. <laughs> <laughs> you sexy motherfucker. Right. right. The first voucher. Is it one voucher? Yeah. It's just one? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a pack of vouchers. No. But you just... One voucher? Yeah. yeah. A what? Not made of money. So... So the voucher is, and I'm going to give this to my uh, tired, tired, beautiful wife. 36 hours free babysitting. I'm going to pop this back in before I stop <laughs> reading it. Is this from Finn? <laughs> to cover getting ready the night out and hangover. That is a beautiful amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not a full two days. Terms and conditions. <laughs> <laughs> This is you <laughs> and Sam, though, isn't it? I'll ask her. No. I haven't confirmed it's her absolutely yet. crucial. <laughs> right. You know, because, you know, when you went, you know, she's a woman, she knows about babies. <laughs> I think Laura might go for this if, if Sam's involved. Okay. I don't think you turning up. Adam, Adam, I've done a poo in my knickers. <laughs> All right. Two seconds. <laughs> Two seconds. Just give us a minute. There's, there's poo poo on the floor mummy and daddy will be angry two seconds a sec <laughs> oh mate I would love to see you J Jack's just gone on to formula which doesn't agree with him and he's been doing some nasty shit I, I genuinely think you Jack. could do with the soundboard to change the fucking nappies of my child at the moment but Etta's the handful um, the terms and conditions so 36, free, 36 hours babysitting which is very considerate yeah. some cunts just turn up for five yeah you, 36 hours you've boffed you've laughed a boff out house. you've I laughed a boff out house. with his own fucking voucher I waffed it away you're going to be incontinent when you're 40 can I 40 that'd be lucky <laughs> can I have 36 hours boff free podcasting I can't promise that no I know that, that's not coming on this Voucher. Terms and conditions. It's valid till the 30th of the 6th, 2021. Right. So we've got to go out. It Basically, we've got nine days of no restrictions, and that's, you're like, I'm going to be too busy. <laughs> yeah. Uncle Adam's smashing gigs. Yeah, but you can go for outdoor stuff now if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got two months. It's valid Monday to Wednesday only. Uh-huh. Nice. 
at least you're honest about it. I yeah. mean, there are no gigs on a weekend, but you've got shit to do. Exactly. I just appreciate your honesty. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a Thursday upgrade but for £10 an hour. Yeah. So that's 360 quid. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Adam can fuck off. <laughs> We're doing it on a Tuesday just so we don't trip into Thursday accidentally. Friday, Saturday, Sunday upgrade, 20 quid per hour. I don't know who you think you are, <laughs> but that makes your day rate more than like a qualified tradesman. Right. And you don't know what you're doing. But if you do take the upgrade, you don't have to take the full 36 hours. So you could take like eight hours and it would just be like 160 quid. <laughs> That's a deal, that. I love it. Adam's, <laughs> Adam's business mind even works in made-up bullshit vouchers. He's like, no, I thought about it. There is an add-on available. But it's on, you know. I'm thinking out. <laughs> I'll do two for one. I'll do your neighbour's kids. <laughs> they'll, they'll love that. Uh, this is phenomenal. Mm. Anybody's? Are any you? Concerns? Like, if I rang up and went, Lab, we want to go out next Tuesday. Would you be like, ah, oh, just did that for the podcast, really? No, you can, yeah, genuinely. As long as, like, I haven't got a, a solid plan already in place. If I've, if I've got, like, a big plan with whatever. But if I've got not, not an on, I'll do the babysitting, absolutely, 100%. With Sam. It, are you worried about <laughs> me doing the baby on my own? Doing the baby. Have you ever, have you ever I'll be honest, the newborn baby mm. is, a, it's a, like, it is a bit admin like, You've, the, the changing and the feeding is a bit fiddly, but I have not been properly concentrating and I've just listened to Laura a bit and I know it, it's fine. Mm. If they're crying, you've got to either feed them or pat the fart out yeah. or burp out. That's and like then me. the rest of yeah. <laughs> it's not actually that difficult. And then you pick them up and you're like, oh my God, don't drop it. This is really, that you get over that as well. Well, but my four-year-old is full the fuck on. Yeah, of course she is. Right. I'll just give her like a can of Coke and some sweets and she'll be fine. Yeah, that. Skittles, probably. <laughs> Skittles. They put them to bed, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Now I got back the other... Uh, I can't remember where, where, where I was. Oh, last night I moved the couch. Can I just say to my mate Tony, absolute legendary, because you didn't even question it. I went, we're moving a couch. I bought a couch off Marketplace, mm-hmm. Facebook Marketplace, love a deal. Yeah. Um, and he helped out moving the couch. It's heavy as fuck. It's gone in the garden office. Absolute fucking legend. And I got back and one, this is the worry about Etta. She, like Tony's what? About your age, quite a good looking lad. And I can see my four year old be like, Hi. I'm like, Oh my God, my daughter's going to be a stripper. Like, there's just, she's literally. She's fancy someone. She's, I know, but it's, she's four. She's tiny and innocent and beautiful, but I can see her. And she's like, oh, Hey, Tony. <laughs> and then she was calling him the man because she's still young enough that she's like, she forgets people's names. And then she didn't want to be like the boy. And she was like, Is the man coming back? I'm like, What is going on with this child? <laughs> and she was also juiced up because uh, Laura had given a full cream egg at like seven o'clock at night. So I wouldn't advise. Like they're like gremlins. There's mm. after a certain point, it's got to be nil by mouth, sugar wise. But if I give it a, sh- she'll like me. So, yeah, I work a lot of my parenting on that. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have a mm. toothless teenager that thinks I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> when I but was... after seven p.m., you are playing with like insulin fire. I'll figure it out to be fine. When I was like eleven or twelve, my mate's little sister. I was sat around the dinner table in his house. I'd been invited around and his little sister was like five and she comes to the dinner table and went, Adam, I really fancy you. No. And I went, no. <laughs> Just like a reflex thing. I was like, not yet. <coughs> no. It actually looks worse when you say no. Yeah. Doesn't it? If, if you just do that thing of like, not uh, in front of everyone else. Yeah, yeah. No, it depends uh, how long you wait to say no. Yeah, but I didn't have the mental capacity. I was 11. Um, no, now, of course, yeah. You're not thinking I, three steps ahead in terms of accusations, are you? Exactly. Now, when I when I got you this gift voucher, um, I had a feeling you might have some of the worries you've expressed. So I did get you an insurance policy too. Jesus Christ. Just thought, you know, just thought, might, might, might put Laura's worries at ease <laughs> as well as yours. I mean, this sounds good, but I do have some reservations. Exactly. So option two... It's not option two. This is insurance for this. Read it. Oh, this is insurance. Like when yeah. you rent a car. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you rent an Adam, aren't you? You want yeah. to make sure you fucking, if you break it. This is the excess. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, right. yeah. Dan and Laura. Two envelopes here, Adam. Look how happy he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, any silver card? Mm-hmm. Been to Hobbycraft? Mm-hmm. Well, goes. <laughs> well, goes. Well, goes. The working, shopping city. The working class Hobbycraft. <laughs> 
uh, babysitting insurance. In the event of losing your children, always good to write that down on a piece of paper, isn't it? Because now we can hold you accountable. Like the law wouldn't back us up. Well, Adam's lost the kids. Well, there's nothing you can do because, you know, he says he doesn't know what happened, but he actually wrote on a piece of paper. So now he's accountable to it. In the event of losing your children, Adam Rowe, not just Adam, <laughs> let's be specific, because this has got to hold up in a court of law. Adam Rowe will provide a new one or two. I thought he said, or two if you're asked. If, or two if two are lost by, <laughs> by either. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's not going to read that. By either coming in a woman, in brackets, of your choice. <laughs> or adoption right so the first one is so weirdly threatening that not only are you threatening to come in a woman but I get to choose her I mean that is a layer of sexual assault that I don't need to be a part of like no, make sure the woman's that up. one <laughs> like, got you on a fucking leash and I'm really go on Adam get it you fucking go on we'll make sure the woman's happy about it right yeah which is it's good isn't it yeah. He's good. And we'll pass this to a woman. Here, I love. <laughs> in, the, in the event that you are chosen to have Adam come in you, um, or adoption, uh, terms, and, terms and conditions. Terms and conditions. Read ahead. Terms and conditions. <laughs> <laughs> Just realising. I think, I think my prescription must be. <laughs> Want me to read? Do you want me to read this? Who's going to be? You read as far as you want to read. Your use. call. So it's my call. Do you know about this? I do. Yeah. So the blame would be on you. Why? You read it. He wrote it down. He didn't. The terms and conditions. <laughs> white. White replacements only. Yeah. That's an iPod. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying the next one. <laughs> and I'm definitely not saying the last one. Shit. You can say the next one. The Chinese upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese upgrade's a thousand pounds. And then there's a final one, which won't even be on Patreon. <laughs> Imagine everyone who's getting a bit annoyed because I'm not reading the last one. All the lads going, fucking hold on, you're the shit house. <sighs> Imagine what it could be. What recently has caused us a couple of issues? It's that. You can say what it is. Nope. Nope. Um, wow. So, let's just run through the insurance policies. I mean, this now doesn't look as good, does it? Because wow. before I was like, wow, 36 hours. Probably wouldn't take the full 36 hours. But even if Sam and Adam could cover... The kids from like tea time till bedtime, and then we could have a go for a meal. That's great. But now that the, the babysitting insurance, it makes that look like less of a good option, doesn't it? That you've had to go, lad. I'm just being honest and upfront. If I lose one or both of your kids, how would you lose Jack? He doesn't move. <laughs> like you can leave Neither him somewhere. Me keys. And I goes, lose my keys like on a daily basis. Right. Yeah. Month old kid shouldn't get it down the back of the couch. Um, so let's the natural way seems great. I mean, I'd probably choose Sam just because I think it would be logistically easier your end. Um, yeah. But then weirdly, I'd be raising your child, <laughs> your first child, um, or adoption. So how would that go with the adoption process? I would adopt a baby and then just give it to you. Nice. And how do you think that would go at the orphanage? I know they're not called orphanages anymore, but essentially they're orphanages, aren't they? The human pound. Ding dong. The human pound. Yeah. What's that? At the dog pound. At the dog pound, but for humans. Oh, I thought you were. Yeah. I didn't know what the was going trust. on. The kids trust. Yeah. yeah. So you ding dong. Hey, you all right? Yeah. And I'm like, I want a kid. And right. they're like. Oh, we've got loads. Yeah. He's like, it's like lost and found back yeah. here. I've got a grand here if you've got any Chinese ones. No, we don't. We don't have any upgrades. 
available. Oh, just have a white one then. Oh. Right. <laughs> Girl or boy, you asked. How many do you need? Uh, can I just ring me mate and see what one he wants? All right, cool. Dan? Two seconds. <laughs> Hello, I'm just posing as an orphanage <laughs> manager. You, you know, you know, Essa got away. Yeah. Do you want another girl or do you want a boy? What, oh, what? not another girl. They're too flirty. A boy. Yeah, I love to. Go, go ahead, mate. I've got, the, I've got, the, I've got the fucking the kid, the kid woman here. I will go ahead. So no. It's a weird thing that scousers do when they want you to get off the phone. Is the go ahead? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, the builder's been doing that to me for a month, and it feels like fuck you. We're at the end of the phone call. Yeah. Like, all right, okay, see. All right, go ahead, Dan. We also, we also say get on me or give us a shout. Yeah. Give us a shout, lad. Get on me. Like, get back just, to me. That means just talk to me get again on me, yeah. in the future. Give us right, a shout, cool. lad. See you in a bit. Um, he, wants, he wants a boy. Right. Cool. And so what do you do? So, are you single? You're in a relationship? I'm in a relationship. Not married. We don't live together, but she's there a lot. Right. That's the first red flag. Why is that red flag? Well, you're essentially... Not in a committed relationship, are you? No, well, don't worry about it. I want the kid. It's not for it. Right, there's the second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you well, do? A level, yeah. Right. Go on. <laughs> Just between, off the record. Oh, yeah, between yeah. Between me and you. So when you go to an orphanage and <laughs> speak to the orphanage manager, a lot of the stuff that you... If you go off the record, they're like, yes, yeah, sound clean it. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Get on me. I know what's coming. And this orphanage does not have enough red flags. <laughs> After that, old right? Yeah. I babysat me, mate. Yeah, I've yeah, done yeah, it before. Yeah. Oh, you're a good lad. How, mm. how long for? 36 hours. Jesus. Yeah. For free? Yeah. Good egg. Well, actually, it was a Thursday. So. <laughs> All right, upgrade. Yeah. yeah you're yeah, a businessman. Um, and long story short, yeah. one of the kids. What? I've got no idea. Right, okay. <laughs> oh. and, and, and I know that you don't want me to have a kid. Right, I get oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My mates are never gonna let me babysit those kids again. Unless, which is understandable. Unless, understandable. So, if you just give me, I'm gonna give it to him. But I didn't want him to have to do all the admin. Yeah, to have done it for him. God, so you're a good you, mate. Apart from the fact that you lost his kids, you are a good mate because you've stopped him having to do all this admin. Exactly. And if you sort me out with a kid, yeah, I'll get you some tickets to what was comedy club. Wow, what on a weekend? To see, Paul, you want. to see Paul Smith. See Paul Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, nice one. You can have two. Have three. We're doing a three for no, two. No, no, no. no. All right, all right. It's hard enough looking after two. Don't what age are you looking for? Yeah, ring him back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, go. <laughs> Dan. Do you want to... Ring, ring. Hello? Do you want a 2021 20, lad or are you looking at like a 15 plate? Where, like... Oh, no. I, I want one that's got control of its bowels, please. Can I have a nine-year-old? Yeah, sound. All right, go Nice one. Get on me. Go ahead. <laughs> on me tits. Um, Fuck off. You got any nine-year-olds that don't shit themselves? Oh, uh, couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you then. I've got my own bag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that got me. <laughs> oh, and scene. Right. Well, I hope epi uh, this episode isn't watched by Laura because uh, if it is, this isn't happening. But that'd be really nice. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'm, I'm genuinely keeping that. Can't wait to uh, to pull you up on that, mate. Mm. Oh, mate! <laughs> I actually to rent that van. They asked what I did for a living, and um, uh, I, re I went to a, re a van rental company, and motherfucker, did they make <laughs> that really hard work? Why? They were like, cool, great, you've got a van, you need to move a couch. Sound! What What do you do for a living? And you say? Podcaster. I say self-employed. Right. Nice and vague. Self-employed. And they're like, all right, great. And you can see them, they're fucking writing it down. And then they go, what What do you do? I mean, why the fuck do they need to know? If Is it for the insurance? Is that why they're asking? Probably, if, you, if you're a stunt man. Yeah. Yeah. Being a self-employed stunt man is probably going to affect your career, isn't it? <laughs> that I understand. What are you renting yeah. the van from Enterprise from? Uh, Fast and the Furious. I am a stunt man. So, <laughs> what if you're a human trafficker and they don't want their their vans being used? Totally. I am a professional 
No, he murderer shot them, of women. And I take my transit van around the industrial areas <laughs> and kill sex workers. I'm going to be honest, sir. So sorry. That's not going to get, we're not going to get insured for that enterprise. Yeah. I said comedian. Yeah. And I don't know why I said it. What do you say in that situation? If it got that far, like I, I would normally say comedian, yeah. Because it was like, it was like I was saying, oh, I kill sex workers. He was like, oh. He obviously typed in and it was like, what's that? And it's weird because they know what a comedian is, but they're like, computer says no. Yeah, yeah. Computer says no. Well, on insurance forms, there's not a comedian, is there? Yeah, I think I think that insurance thing must be the same as when you go through like Aviva or Admiral. You have to say like entertainer or whatever. So entertainer doesn't always work though, does it? No, so I am a writer who does 4,000 miles a year. Yeah. You just write into what? Get pens? Yeah. You're just driving to get pens. 4,000 <laughs> round, 4, miles round trip to Office World. <laughs> so I said, oh, just put writer down. He was like, oh yeah, I've put writer down. He's like, have you got any proof that you're a writer? I was like, no, because I'm a comedian. <laughs> you just wrote a what the fuck? I, I felt like going, where were you in this conversation, dickhead? You went, what do you do as a job? I was like, I'm a comedian. And he was like, all oh, right, it's not coming up as comedian. I was like, yeah, I just put writer then. That's what I do for my insurance. He went, brilliant, I've put writer. Can you pr prove that you're a writer? I was like, no, mate. Backtrack two bits of this conversation, you fucking muffin. Why do they need proof what? to rent a van? What the fuck Hang am on. I going to do? I was like, what am I going to do? A midwife. Yeah, what? And he asked for proof. Like you get a payslip from the hospital, maybe I don't know. From the mid from midwives. Or you get com. a picture of you with a baby that you yeah. just delivered. You know, like when people go fishing and they get a picture with the fish. Yeah, yeah. midwives Jesus like that. Hell, she's done loads of babies. <laughs> Two twins. That's what we call them in the industry. Twins. That's how you know I'm in the game. I, I, when he was like, "Have you any proof that you're right?" I was like, "I don't know what you mean." Like, yeah, if you go to Waterstones and you go right to the back, science fiction, and I fuck off. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm gonna like scan a book, like a Penguin Classic, with my fucking name on it. If you were gonna write a book, would you write science fiction? Is that what you're saying? If you were gonna write a novel, I just literally thought of the first. No, I'd like if we're doing this real, you know, real talk. Um, I would say something about 16th century Dave's would definitely come into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to uh, do a, cause I, I love Wolf Hall and the Shard Lake series, which is like a, Oh yeah. Yeah. He's like a, we you have, love it. We you don't shut up them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You grew up on it. Yeah. 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 Audio box in the car. Yeah. Everything. Shard Lake. What is it called? The first one. Wolf. Oh, Wolf Hall's. That one, yeah. That's by Hillary. My Mann favorite book Hillary growing Mantel. up was a uh, match of the day magazine. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. It was a good book. Yeah, new yeah, one yeah. every week as well. There's a, really a real series. paperback, probably yeah. made of fucking paper. <laughs> I yeah, I'd do that, but I'd do it about a, I'd like a like an Elizabethan uh, crime stopper called Dave <laughs> Tudor Dave Tudor Dave Dave Tudor Dave Tudor. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know he's from the Tudor era because he's called Tudor. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird though, isn't it? Because you don't hear that name anymore, and you'd think. That, that name will be, still be around. I mean, we know someone with the second name, Tudor. Do we? Yeah. Who? George. George Tudor? Yeah. Who's Used to that? be a bartender. Oh, George George. I yeah. didn't know that was his surname. Yeah. I thought it was George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, George George. His name is George of the Jungle. What do you mean George George? <laughs> yeah, Jane, I'm, uh, yeah I, I knew a Jane Tudor growing up. Yeah. Yeah. You trace your family back. You must be pissed off. If Henry you... the Eighth Tudor, isn't he? Henry Tudor, yeah. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. The House of Lancaster. What? He's from the House of Lancaster. They won the War of the Ro His dad won the War of the Roses. Did he live in Lancaster? No, he didn't. He's the, the, the sort of family seat was the House of Lancaster. You know Richard III, who had the hunchback and killed the kids in the tower? Was he the one in Tesco? He... Yeah, he was the one that died in the Tesco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he was, ha they were the House of York. And this is how mental I was growing up. I was like, because I'm from Lancashire, I was like, yeah, fucking won that one. Like it was a weird, you know, because Lancashire's not got loads going on for it. Yeah. But growing up, I was like, yeah, House of Lancaster. Yeah. S sad, really. But when he was the king, he moved to London, surely. Yeah, he did spend a lot. Of t yeah, they were all in London. Yeah. But their sort of like family seat was Lancaster. Yeah. Yeah. Jack and the Lever be like, oh. I was going to say Jack and the Lever be like a king or queen in this country who 
like sort of rules from elsewhere. Do you know what I mean? But like, it's going to be them forever, and they're just going to stay where they know. Well, they, yeah, they, unless unless the line dies out, because what happens then? Like, let's say because right. par- Parliament just chooses a new royal family. Does it? Well, the Windsors are German. Yeah, I know. The House of Hanover, is it like 1780 or 17... F- when it, Like the, the line that uh, Elizabeth, Queen Victoria, all the Georges, George the, who, you know, from yeah. Hamilton, that line goes back to the House of Windsor and they basically just got selected. I think Queen Anne was barren and that was the end of that. So hang on. It, really important question here. Just pause that for a sec. So you're telling me if they, let, let's say, like, something happened there and they all, they all got COVID, dead. The whole lot got COVID and they couldn't. I mean, that family, that royal lineage is yeah. so massive yeah. that you would literally have, you'd be killing off 70 fucking people. Okay, so some of them get COVID and the rest of them, I don't know, all get shot, right? Dead. Yeah. That'd be a hell of a news story, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> a 99-year-old uh, consort died last week and everyone wanked on about it. Like it was like, oh, who saw it coming? Everybody! Isn't it sad? Not really! What a phenomenal innings! If anything, he lived too long. If you told me how long I could live right now and you went, I'll give you 99, I'd be like, I'm all right with 90. Call it 89. I don't want a 99. Like, yeah, the last 90 years, that must have been pain. Yeah, not a lot of fun. Yeah. So, But they all die. So you say Parliament the whole lot. picks a new... But how do they do it? Is it like everyone's name goes in at and they just go... Yeah, they get all the royal families from around the world... Oh yeah, and they do like a right. you know the no, World no, no. Cup draw, and Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi are there. See, I thought and you it's meant FIFA. They like oh, my I thought God. you meant it was everyone in Britain. I thought I was in. Nah, and maybe you. Nah, they go. They keep it in the Royals, don't they? They keep it in the Royals. What if all they die? What if all the Royals <laughs> in the world are dead? What if everyone except for Adam is dead? <laughs> is this basically Carl's just cut us down to? How does King Adam actually happen? No, but like on the Patreon episode this week, we did a whole thing about if Adam was the king of Liverpool. And as we started it, I was like, this guy is so mental. And by the end of it, I was having the best time ever. Like, I'd be, I'd make a good king. The farmers, we'd have farmers. As long as we got farmers. But now you want to know how it's going to happen. No, I'm not saying I want to be the king. I, you are. I want to know. No. You are. I think I'd be good at it, but that doesn't mean I want to be it. Do you know what I mean? Looks hard way. I think I'd be good at Olympic discus as well. <laughs> Just fucking competitive frisbee, really, innit? <laughs> but I don't want to do it. Yeah. Because like, do you know who won gold at the last Olympics in the discus? You don't, because no one gives a shit about them, so no, why no, would anyone no. want to do that? This is generally how I feel about the Olympics, basically. I don't, I I'm really, don't, you know when Olympics. people like, because people say he's an Olympian as if like it's fucking good. Well, that is good because that means you're like, you're very good at one thing, but I still don't give a shit about the Olympics. But like there's so much in the Olympics that it's not worth being good at because like it's good for like that day on once every four years, it's good for that. And then the rest of the time you're just walking around like, what can I do? Oh, I can throw a stick dead far. Don't you want Unless a gold you've got a really box? active dog, it's pointless, isn't it? Don't you want a gold post box and dovey? Why, why are you training for javelin? Because I think I can be one of the best in the world at javelin. You haven't even got a dog? <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll quit. No yeah. No, but isn't Olympics is just the home of all of the sports that no one really gives a fuck about professionally? Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I think when, when all the like pro sports come into the Olympics, you're like, just fuck off. Like, football in the Olympics is daft. Yeah. Football is represented at every level. There's like the pinnacle in the World Cup nationally. There's locals. There's European competitions. There's like the what's the Copa Libertadores? What's the South American one that's like the Champions League? Copa Libertadores. Yeah. yeah. Hey, why do you need an under twenty threes competition in the Olympics? Stupid tennis in the Olympics. Bullshit golf. Bullshit. But you know, like throwing shit dead far. Let's give them their time in the Olympics. But like what I'm saying is. Why do we give it any attention? Like the high jump. Who needs that? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Unless you're like, you've been held captive in a back garden with a, yeah. a not that big fence. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it must just be the history that that's, they were like, it really feels like the Olympics started with someone going, lad, can you jump over that? <laughs> yeah. Lad, 
how far can you throw this? Well, it's just the pinnacle of everything the body can do, isn't it? Yeah, but then why why isn't the keep, why isn't, the highest, the why isn't keepy uppies part of the? I don't really know what to answer that. No, no, I don't know, but like it is a bit. <laughs> it's a stupid question. You. I've right. got more respect for someone who Thanks, can do Carl. like Thanks hundreds. For that. <laughs> that was so thick. I don't want to say any more words. I've got more respect for someone who can do hundreds of keepy ups than someone who can just jump a bit. Do you know what I mean? There's it more is. skill in doing keepy ups than like sprinting and just jumping into some. But sand. you know the long jump, English man, wow. famous one. But you don't know the fame. The Linford Christie, up. Jonathan Edwards, Jonathan Edwards. Who's Linford Christie? Was He's he a runner? runner. Yeah. yeah. See the that that's the best bit about the Olympics, isn't it? The hundred meter final, the hundred and two hundred meters. It's ten that's seconds the best long. Bit. <laughs> yeah, the best part. Lasts the best 10 part seconds. is nine point eight seconds if they're doing it well. The best part of most things lasts less than 10 seconds, though, doesn't it? That is a made-up theory that you just came up with in s- no, just instantly. sex is all about coming. Right. If you didn't come, you wouldn't do it. Dr. Adam again. <laughs> yeah. But you fuck for 20 minutes. Yeah. That's a well-known fact. But that's, that's, why they call you, that's why they call you a f- paid spot. <laughs> but the first 19 minutes and 50 seconds are just waiting to come. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 and, like, the high jump is just waiting for the 100 metres, isn't it? It's the same thing. What about yeah. going on Aldi? So the hundred yeah, me- the hundred meter final is an orgasm. It's like the sperm <laughs> racing for the fucking egg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ta- g- give How do we exa- get on the Olympics from the royal families of the world? I give you an example of something that's what? But like the the best bit of it isn't like really short in in like in in context to how long it is. A magnum. What do you mean? Eating a magnum. But the eating it, the first bite's probably the best, isn't it? <laughs> what? Like the eating a white magnum. Oh. Are you trying to make this real work for everything in life? I think it's a general, uh, in general. I don't think you can give me something, you know what I mean? When your kid's born, like the night, na- like the, the na- first 10 seconds is great. And after that, <laughs> it's a bore lake. The nine months leading up to it is just waiting with someone moaning about how hard it is. And then they have to go through a fucking nightmare, the nightmare of childbirth. Awful. And then it's out and it's like, wow, it's sick. Yeah, the and then you realise you're covered in blood. The childbirth doesn't last nine months, does <laughs> You're covered in blood. The dad. Both. Yeah, yeah, If yeah. you take the baby, the baby's got blood on it, hasn't it? Because it's come out of there. Yeah. So that 10 seconds, you're like, wow, is this is me kid. And you're like, oh, I've ruined loads me of poo in childbirth? Because I've never seen it. I've been there, but I wasn't old enough to remember. You've seen two. You've the been there. Do you mean you were the baby? Yeah. Good shout. <laughs> fucking shit. Is there loads <laughs> of... What was Carl's word. Someone's fucking pooed there. <laughs> Is there loads of poo? Don't know. I was, at the, I was literally oh, just... Was the C- 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 two C-sections in it. Yeah, I was nowhere near the business. Head. I would go as far to say that if the girl's having a C-section, if she shits herself, <laughs> that's on her. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's it, just like taking advantage of the situation. Dr. Adam. Yeah. If a woman just goes... I think when you've had an epidural and you can't feel anything from your tits down, I don't think anyone's going to be like... <laughs> no surgeon's going to be like, Oh, you dirty bitch! No, I'm not doing this. Got another fucking surgeon. I'm, 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 I went to university for fucking years. I'm a leading fucking surgeon in my field. And you've just shat where I work. No. Do I come to where you it work? Okay, shit. It thing, is a good excuse, the, though. The thing is, though, you're saying that, but it must be annoying when you're a surgeon and you've gone through all the sterilisation process and then you're like, fucking hell, she shit on me scalpel here. I think that's on you as a surgeon. <laughs> no, so it, you shouldn't be keeping your scalpel near a fucking woman's bum hole. So anyway, the royal family. <laughs> How the fuck did we get onto that classic have a word nonsense? So, I, all the royals in the world died. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. Laura's gone. Laura. And all the royals are dead. Liz is gone. Liz is gone. Right. Uh, they- Wouldn't it be funny if Charles died just after his mum? Now, I'm not, listen, I'm not funny. trying to be a cunt, <laughs> but I am. Wouldn't it be pretty funny? He's like 76. He, he loves her, but he's dying for her to fuck off. Yeah. King Charles. Charles the Third. I think he'd be Charles the Third. Do you reckon if he'd she... Like, fuck you, mum. Do you reckon if he got seriously ill 
and the Queen didn't. So let's say you got like, I don't know, Prince Aids or something, right? Prince Aids. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. If he how'd co- you get Prince? What how'd you get Prince Aids? Just by licking the royal Prince. asshole. I fucking Prince. Shag Prince. So <laughs> he gets seriously ill and he gets cold. Listen, lad, you've got a year tops. Minimum six months. You'll be five or six months, but you got a year tops. Yeah. Don't know what illness it is. <laughs> it's very specific. <laughs> but this doctor, because they have the best doctors. They've looked into it loads. Done loads of scans and that test of his blood. They really do have good doctors. I'll yeah. give them that, the royal family. 99. He's still alive. So they're like, you got six months, but yeah, that you're going to be topped out there. And Liz, is, Liz gets a check up at the same time. Yeah. Just to make sure she hasn't got it. And they go, you've got five years left to you, Liz. Yeah. You're, gonna be you're a fucking vampire. Right? Yeah. Do you reckon she'd then be like, I'll step down and let you have six months as king? No. I can't speak for the queen, yeah. but I, I'd say this pretty definitively. Not a fucking chance. Why? Mate, she is the Tom Brady of fucking sovereigns she is racking up stats mm. is she the longest serving queen or king ever you say I, seven i think i think she's there queen victoria did just did 63 years or 62 years she's been on the throne since 52 so she's coming up to it 70 is. years on the throne big lizzie she is she's literally like tom brady she just wants all the rings she wants to go down as the goat. And I think she'd bury Charles. Just be like, fuck you, Charlie. I'm going for stats. 6th of February, 52. So that means 6th of February next year, she hits 70. I reckon after that, she might think about it. And be like, got 70. Nah. I, I, I think she's going for the fucking record. And nah, she's got no. the record, but I think she's cementing it. No one's beating that anyway. Sev- most people don't live till 70. Never mind. Fucking do fuck all for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think she's going to keep it going. And I think Charles is fucked. I think William's got a chance of being uh, more... He's. I think there will be a King William. I think that is actually going to happen. Do you reckon? I think King Charles, genuinely, he might have a little run of it. Say she gets... Just by... Like, her husband lived till 99. Say she gets another four years. How old's Charles? Is he 75? He's going to be... He's going to be near 80 by the time... He's going to be near 80 by the time he gets on the throne. 72. Oh, he's 72. So that would make him 76. He might only get 10 years, and that puts Prince William at like 50-odd when he he could go 30, 40 years. Easy. Yeah. Could do 50, really. Charles must be dying to be king, just be like, fuck you. Yeah, but why? What what, what does he get? On his face on the money? (coughs) Yeah, but it's like being the assistant manager for fucking 72 years, isn't it? pay rise, though? No, but he just gets to be the king, doesn't he? Yeah. He's no. been told since he was born, you're going to be king one day. Like, he will have been told that thousands of times. Yeah. And then it might never happen. And then, he could easily from die tomorrow. if your mum lives forever on purpose. <laughs> she, she, looks, she, she doesn't look 95, though. She no, doesn't. she fucking doesn't. Do you reckon she'll ever sort of dabble again in the old... You know what I mean? For the audio listeners, what was that, Adam? So that just little... I'm in my sucking a dick. I think she might be done. I think she might be done. P.S. Thanks to all my mates who sent me uh, Queen Elizabeth's Tinder profile just after P- Prince. She's got some fucking waps on her. <laughs> yeah, mate. Oh, come on. Come on, bro. It doesn't count. Waps don't count after What's a certain What's the reckon age. she's got? They're just medical size things. Size-wise? No. <laughs> 32? She's got great granny tits. Do you not reckon she'll ever touch a dick again? No. Oh, not even just to be like... I don't reckon she's touched a dick for a decade. You don't reckon? No. I feel like... Do you like reckon she's got, like, man sluts who she just brings in? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not saying Philip could get her up, because he's been a corpse for a long time, hasn't he? Yeah. Like, I know he died recently. We've but... talked about the royal family's sex life quite a lot these last few yeah, weeks, haven't we? needs to. But, like... Nah, she's... She's finished with the dick. She, yeah. She wants to walk her corgis and just spite her son. That's what she's all about now. Mm. I just, I just think if that was me, I'd be like one more, yeah. one more before I go. Start an OnlyFans, she'd fucking rip it on OnlyFans, wouldn't she? She's single, you know. It's a crowded market OnlyFans now, though, isn't it? Do you, yeah, you think she'd struggle to really get her? <laughs> yeah, I think the Queen would. Re- if she'd have got in earlier on OnlyFans, like you know, at the start, 
I don't think she'd do very well I'm now. Not, you know, I'm being the she, Queen she, of England. She'd do all right, but like, do you know what I mean? There's a lot of people on OnlyFans now who pre like I know we've all got to do what we can to survive the pandemic, but there's people on OnlyFans who wouldn't like have a place on the fucking pound bakery tills. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a very specific niche. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my smash pasty. How many dicks do you reckon the Queen sucked? Oh, Carl. Um, Do you reckon it's more than 10? No. I don't think she's ever put one in her mouth. I really, no, like, I, suck Philip off. I really like that OnlyFans <laughs> thing. I thought right, we could really like have a bit of fun with that OnlyFans thing. Carl's like, nah, how many dicks <laughs> has she sucked? Do you reckon it's more than one? It might be three. Why? It just might be three. <laughs> the rule of three. It's just, you know... She I might... think post-war, maybe, she was a young woman, wasn't she? All the boys. <laughs> <laughs> How long was she married to him? Seventy odd years. So she was twenty. Yeah, she got to talk. She to married him before she assumed the thing, didn't she? she? Yeah, she probably married him late forties. So she, yeah, she got loads of pipe there. No, it's even before. It's she. She married him in oh, in the late forties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not in her late forties. Yeah. 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 Mad. I reckon when they all came back from the war. There might have been a bit of finger banging going on around uh, West London. There's actually a film about it. <laughs> Is there? Not about her getting finger banged in West London, but her and uh, Queen's <laughs> scenes from her the crown. And, her and Prince Margaret went on and went on the lash secretly around London at the end of the war after VE Day. Yeah, I've seen her. And uh, I reckon maybe. <laughs> Do you reckon she told them she was the prince, princess? Yeah, don't know. Or do you reckon she just like did a makeup so she didn't look like recognisable? <laughs> she hid all the makeup. Money. <laughs> what 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 makeup? Like a joker or something? <laughs> yeah. Halloween? Maybe she'll have some Halloween. If you're good at something, <laughs> never do it for free. <laughs> some fucking sailors come back from war and he's got <laughs> Princess Elizabeth. <laughs> Adam, are you insinuating that the Queen went out? Dressed up on Halloween and suck loads of men off. Mm. Not loads. Is it time for an advert here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we're just like grinding it into the But That's the only way she could go around without being noticed, isn't it? If she had like a, a mask on or a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's got a hat on now and I'm looking at you. Um, people that keep coming to me go, are you the queen? <laughs> are you the queen? Are you the uh, post-war late 1940s queen? Oh, that was dirty. That was so dirty. Love it. Right, we can have a break. Go on then. Break it. Ah! What's happening, guys? Ooh, look at your outfit. Shocking. You look horrible in that. That's a shit t-shirt, jumper, dress thing, whatever that is you've got on. What you need, lad, is a fucking t-shirt or a hoodie from haveawaredpod.com. You want some official Have A Word merch? Go to haveawaredpod.com and get some then instead of wearing that fucking shite you've got on. It's horrible. You look a joke. Don't be leaving the house like that. You want a hoodie that says rat? That's what you need, lad. Go and get it. Haveawaypod.com. Do you know what I've seen in the garage? What? Controversial chocolates. Where'd you stand on? So one of the uh, uh, podcasts I listen to for the NFL is called PFT, Pro Football Talk. Shout out uh, Chris Sims and Mike Florio. And they were having a big debate because Mike Florio is a bit older and he's a big fan of chocolate-coated pretzels. Where you at? Nice, huh? Have you ever had them before? Yeah. Have you? Yeah, it's just bread and chocolate, isn't it? Like, what's not to like? Yeah, but it's salted, crispy bread, isn't it? Yeah. I know, but, like, it sounds weird, doesn't it? Salt, bread, chocolate. Yeah, but just because you like individual things, like, you like lamb, but you don't want that covered in chocolate, do you? I love it when Adam's like, I don't want to concede that point, so I'm thinking about it. Chocolate. Oh, there's salted caramel. Aren't chocolate there? leg of lamb. Not one. Go on. Obi. Ah, nothing but palm. Try the white. Oh. A very strong salted aroma. caramel pretzel. Mm. I'm into them, mate. I could polish a bag of them off. And that's that section done. I'm not joking, that works absolutely great. Can I have a white one, please, Adam? Oh, I mean, salted caramel should work, shouldn't it? 
No, I seen a conspiracy theory the other day that John Lennon was black. <laughs> and they whited him down. Some of your conspiracy conspiracies are retarded. It's not mine. Yeah, but you, just, but you just said it on a podcast and in front of other people. Mm. So it sort of is yours now. I, no, I said I've seen it. I didn't say you, I believe it. You just taken part ownership of it. No, I said I've seen it. You're it. propagating it. You're pushing it out back into the world. Have you ever now. seen him in real life with his makeup off? Oh, yeah. Um, the, f- the first Google term. Oh, it's a John Lennon song. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if John Lennon was black. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. It's easy if you try. <laughs> Imagine all. I can't actually read the name of this song because it's um, racially you know, insensitive. Very. Yeah. You read that, did you? What fucking shite are you reading? Where are you reading that shite? Is that what you're reading when you're like two seconds? Two seconds. <laughs> Is that what you? Is that the bollocks you're filling your day with? No, I'm off. If I'm on my phone, I'm often doing very important business work. No, you're not. <laughs> Horse shit. You've got loads of emails to answer. You come in here and fucking go. Oh my god, he was black. <laughs> Mick Jack. Mick Jack is Mexican. <laughs> Adam, we've had two emails about sponsors. Do you want to answer them? Two seconds. <laughs> two seconds. I'm Whitakins, an actual hippo. <laughs> fucking hell. She's a hip. She's a hip. I've lost another fart, and it's your fault. Uh. That one's salted as well. Listen, I, I'm a bit of a nonce for like being pussy. <laughs> oh, right. That's going to get cut, fucking isn't it? hell. You don't help yourself, do you? I try to, but how have you got an attractive girlfriend? You're a fucking disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, Dan. <laughs> You can't smell what I can smell. I've smelled it before. I know you have. I'm sat here discovering a really exciting new treat. And it's got like salted caramel flips will now be forever coated in Adam's <laughs> awful body rot. You're doing the boffin, aren't you, as well? Mate, wow. you You're need bo- to join Booper and see a doctor. What are you saying? You're both doing the boff, aren't you? No? So, Sam. I still have not Despite um, being done the- very... Lovely, um, and all that. She's uh, she's not shy, and she will let a boff off. And if you think mine are bad, that angelic woman who has come into my life and improved it smells like... <laughs> that was a brilliant, brilliant preface for she's a dirty, smelly bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she's really, really bad. Eggy. Stinky farts, and this is the this is the big kicker. Her feet hummed ding. Oh wow! Oh, but it's her own fault. So yesterday, I went. Is that your fucking feet? She was like, "Yeah, they bad." And I was like, "Yeah." She went. Well, I woke up and I had no clean tights, so I had to put yesterday's on. So she had two day old feet muck in tights. Was well, she always like that, or have you just indoctrinated her into We've your ways? Put our, our relationship has been. Government mandated fast forward because we spent a lot of time together because of lockdown. You know, we're what four months in, but we're you know, we're by probably- most relationship standards, you're about two and a half years in, exactly. Yeah, and she's just like she's dead sound, but the price of someone being as sound as she is, she smells, she farts whenever she wants. And yeah, that's fine. I'm ge- genuinely like Laura, she's the best, best woman that's ever let me anywhere near her. She fucking hums. She rips him, rips him. See, we don't do right that. from the off. Look, though we had a grace period where she pretended she didn't trump, like every woman in the history of relationships, like just like g- grimacing through it. But then when it went, oh, it was like a dam breaking, a stinky dam. Sam told me that she used to save hers up for when she went home. Yeah, and she uh, like she oh, told me this in yeah. front of her mum, and her mum was like, Adam, when she first started seeing you, whenever she come back, it'd be like hours of farting. Well, it, it, it's like that old bit that I used to do about why is everyone dead nicey-nice on dates. You should just be honest yeah. in yourself. Don't even yeah. go to a nice restaurant. Just go and do your tax return at your parents' house. But, like, there is something to be said for, like, I fart. But at first date, you'd have to be a pretty obnoxious self. Like, there'd have to be a lot of, like, strength of character to be, like, in a Pizza Express, like, <laughs> yeah? You want to get involved with this long term? <laughs> Breathe it in now, love. So... 
One t- when we, we first started, started seeing each other, and I mean when we first started, I think this was the third time I'd met her. It was. So we went out on our first date, then we bumped into it on a night out. We did. And the third time I met her, she came to the, the Secret Sundays gig that me and Carl run, mm. and then she came to stay in mine, and she stayed for like two days, two nights in a row. Can't hold them in for two. Can't hold for 48 hours is a limit. And she didn't fart. Not yeah. once. Wow. But on the... The, the day that we were hung over. So she come on the Sunday night. She stayed Sunday night and she stayed Monday night as well. So on the Monday evening, we got a chippy and I went to collect it and just left it in my house. And when I got to the chippy, I rang her and she didn't answer. And then she rang me <laughs> what back. What's she doing? She rang me back out of breath. She's like, you're right. You're right. And I was like, yeah, I was just ringing to see if you want like a can of cherry Coke or a Pepsi or a Fanta, <laughs> like what you want. She's like, uh, uh, can I have a... Uh, a, a coke, please. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah you're all right." She's like, "Yeah, yeah." I'm just brushing my teeth. I was like, okay. <laughs> That's a bit <laughs> really so, going. For and it. I went, "You only brush your teeth like an hour ago." And she's like, "Yeah, but I, I, I like to keep my breasts na- na- nice and fresh, especially when I'm on a, like sort of a date with someone." She's in my house the third time we've met. And last week, she told me that she was actually going for a stealth shit. So she was trying because she'd been in my house for a full day. She needed to go for a poo, but she wasn't comfortable pooing with me in the house yet, in my house. So she waited till I went to the and she was like, go time. Ran up the stairs, tried to squeeze her shit out. And as she started turtling her fucking her poo out, her phone is still downstairs and it's rang. And she's ran down to get it. Oh, my God, it's too much pressure. I just poo in the garden. It's a really good question. I didn't ask her. Yeah. Funnily enough. I think that looks worse, doesn't it? Like in the garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, <laughs> uh, I'm just I've just put the uh, the the rubbish from the Chinese in the bin. And no, uh, that's not Adam. There's a not large again. there's a large <laughs> human. Pe- oh right, yeah. I've just wazzed all the Chinese waste in the garage. <laughs> that's just thrown it in there. Hey, my garage and garden is fucking clear at the minute. Because you paid someone to do it. Yeah, yeah. Some little Mexican fella. Cool. I mm. think he was Mexican. He had one of those faces. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ro. A Mexican face. I yeah. have come for to... Sombrero. I have know. come for to take rubbish out of the garage. So he turned up, this is true, with his little maze. His mate looked like a smackhead. And, and he turned up and he was like, uh, so what, do you want going everything? And I was like, yeah, everything. And I was like, do you want to drink while you're here? And he goes, do you have beer? And I was like, yeah. So I gave him a beer each. Corona. Like, what? Corona. I think it was Budweiser. I had Budweiser and I had Moretti. And I was like, do you know what? You're getting paid enough for this. You're not having a Moretti. Have a Bud and shut the fuck up. Right. Hang on. Because it, it's very believable, apart from the fact you're making out he was Mexican. He was a bit of one of them. Okay. South American. South American or Spanish not or a Portuguese. Big, not a big sort Mexican's of... Mexican's not South American. S- Central American. Oh, such a nonce. Gobshite Fuck of a cunt. In hell. Just trying to help the people. I stand by every syllable in that. You're a gobshite people of a are cunt. Listening. Actually, Panama is a Central American as well. People are listening and they're like, that's wrong. I no, thought. they're not. No one was doing that. People well, were where is he go, from? What? He's not genuinely Mexican, is he? Have you got the only Mexican fucking gardener cleaner in the whole of Liverpool? Mate, he's not a gardener. He literally took bin bags out my garage, took them in a van with a smack head, asked me for beer. And he's on that epic like these. Where did you find them? Have you got Mexican gypsies around yours? Maybe. <laughs> Mipsies. Where did you find them? I don't know. LeBron! Black <laughs> 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 <Beth> Griffin! <laughs> Where did you find a, a Mexican man in a smackhead? I googled. Like a Disney film. <laughs> I googled, I've been using my garage as a large bin. Can you help? Go ahead. Go get ahead. On get on me. Come in me garage. Jizz in there. Have a thev ether and fuck off. I googled um, waste disposal Liverpool. Yeah. Nice. Rang the mobile number that came up. <laughs> and you got a Mexican. And he was like, yes, you all sent me a picture of the problem. And I was like... Yeah, go ahead. Oh. And he went, my number is... And I was like, I already know your number because I've rang you on it. And uh, then I sent him a picture of my garage and he said, uh, 200 pounds. How bad was it? It's not bad. Have they left Have they left your stuff in the garage? Because that What's sounds that? like a you'll lose everything from your garage sort of deal. Oh, I wanted everything out of the garage, gone. There was nothing in the garage that I wanted. Right, okay. Hang on, how long did the job take? About an hour. You got 200 pounds to just take some bags out? 
Yeah, but like he's got to pay for the disposal, hasn't he? Oh, he's got to pay he, for the disposal. He's got to hire the van. He's got to pay his smack head. Yeah, I suppose. In smack. Yeah. yeah. And smack's not cheap. Or he's also got, he's got to send money back to Mexico. Yeah. I'd love to know, actually know where he's from, but Adam's definitely not going to tell us because Mexicans Honestly, definitely... if I had to, like, if this was like, who wants to be a millionaire? Jose's West Disposal. If I... <laughs> if I'm... All over the West, West Derby area. <laughs> Hello, my friends. If I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and Jeremy yeah. Clarkson was sat opposite me, yeah. And he went to, uh, right, uh, for a million pounds. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's asking it like that as well. Yeah. For a mil. Spot on impression. impression. A good, another phenomenal impression. <laughs> that man who uh, came and removed all the shite from your garage in 2021, was he Mexican? A hey, Mexican. Spanish? Argentinian? Or Welsh? You wouldn't. You wouldn't be sure. I'd go Mexican. You go Mexican. I'd go. Do you know what? You don't need one, aren't you? No, Jez. That's what they say, don't they? I know I've got all my lifelines left. But <laughs> <laughs> got to the mail. I know. I know. That's the audience, but they don't remember them anyway. <laughs> yeah, and they weren't. They weren't there in that situation. Actually, so actually, actually can, actually, can I use the phone of friend and can I ring him? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my friend. Our questions on who wants to be in there. <laughs> Usually to do with the contestant's life. Like question two on who wants to be a millionaire. Who was the first girl you kissed? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a first time for everything, isn't it? Adam's holidays, isn't like a. Uh, so you, so in all tr truth, the garage problem was so bad you had to pay two hundred pounds. Yeah. To get someone to clear clear it out. Yeah. Good God. It was there was just bin bags in there. There was like for like. Bit of furniture that I'd gone, oh, I'll get take that to the tip one day, I'll lash it. You know, like a stand that's a bit d fucked or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd just, like, let it get out of hand. Ah, you've, you've basically employed a Mexican middleman, haven't you? Everyone yeah. does what you do. They just drive it to the skit. They drive it to the tip, don't they? You've yeah. just managed to get the only Mexican. I thought you were saying yeah. everyone employs Mexican middlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You just employed a Mexican middleman. Everyone does. <laughs> Two or uh, three times a year. I know. Like, yeah, yeah, who yeah. am I going <laughs> to... Everyone needs a Mexican middleman for weird household tasks, don't they? Ah, yeah. oh, shit, I've got to wash the cars, but can't be arsed getting wet. Jose! <laughs> Hello! Oh, that's, a good name. That's, that's a good name for the company as well. Jose, because of water? No, the Mexican middleman. All right. Jose, yeah, the hose bay pipes. We are on absolute <laughs> fire here, guys. <laughs> um, Fran says, if you were a billionaire... Let's say you've got a cool two bill, two bill from oil and farming money and you were going to bankroll from oil, he's put from oil and farming uh, and you were going to bankroll a club from the bottom division of English football and fund their rise, yeah. proper sugar daddy style. Get that off. Who yeah. would you choose, why and what would you do? So Get you've got to, you're, you're at Rowie Bags. Uh, what division is it? Wow, it's such a lot of bollocks. No, it's the so fourth go, tier, go isn't it? Go to the League 2. Get League 2 to Italy, Yeah, League 2. Makes loads of sense. League 2 is the fourth league. We're getting the league table up. Um, yeah, could you, uh, the Premier could you League, make there's the Championship, people. there's League 1, and there's League Could two. you make it smaller, shrink it on the, so we can see all the clubs? Oh, I won't be able to read it if you make it smaller. Oh, Jesus. Um, no, zoom, zoom like in, into like... And we'll just scroll down. So Bolton, Bolton are, are right in the bottom tier, and they used Fork to be Bolton, a yeah. Premier League club, and they've got a stadium that's actually kind, kind of, Fork kind Bolton. of nice. Keep going. So I think it needs to be lower league. These are these. Keep are what, going. These have all had the chance. No, it's that these are there's a league. I mean, if you're going to be a billionaire, owning Scunthorpe would be fun, wouldn't it? Because Scunny would be like, "What the fuck." Oh, Harrogate Town. Jesus Christ. Harrogate Town might be quite a nice touch. Harrogate's fucking <coughs> lovely. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's Yorkshire Tories, basically. I would maybe think about Oldham. Just because I know they're all probably Closet Man United fans, and I'd get them to the top and then just sell them to some dickhead and, like, just get them just on the precipice of success. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's been, he's just on the precipice of success 
oh my god, fucking nail. And then I'd be like, do you know what? Fuck off, and I'd sell all the players and send them right back <laughs> where they come. It's about where you where do you actually want to be? If you're a billionaire, you've got to visit this fucking place, Cambridge, haven't you? So I mean, if you were really keeping it easy, Tranmere would be an option. Because for you guys, it's just over the water. Tell me about But then could you, but would you want to be the Liverpool fan that is the billionaire that's pulled Tranmere Rovers up from the fucking fourth tier? I'd, uh, I think I might go, uh, I don't know, like, where are even nice, where's there a good gig in any of these places? Not Bradford. Uh, Salford, because close to Manchester. <laughs> But like they were Media that City. Fucking, that's Gary Neville's goals, isn't that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, but they're not billionaires, are they? No. no. Got a bit of dough, though. So I think you need to go lower leagues where like it's fun teams because they're all boring then. Right. Well, I'm I happily go uh, somewhere like Harrogate because I can just like it's just an. I basically base a lot of this off like what are the gigs like. If I've had shocking gigs somewhere, I'm like, yeah, I don't like it. Well, I'm not I've buying nice... fucking York, mate. Can I just say? On the record, by the way, I put a uh, a thing out yesterday for uh, where, where shall I bring me tour to, and the third most requested place behind Newcastle and Glasgow is York, and I don't know whether people are doing it for a laugh, of course they or are. whether there's an actual demand in York, <laughs> but I've got to send this data to my agent, and he's going to put a fucking York tour date in. It's not, no one is, the, our li listenership is, we're not massive in York. That's all the lids going. <laughs> oh, lads. I know where Adam's no, going. Lads, people are... There's a couple of people who've done that and gone, you <laughs> only joke on Manchester. There's a few people who've gone, like quite a few, who've commented, I know you say you ate it, but it's not all that bad. Please come to York. I'm going to end up doing a tour show in York and eating a bag of dicks for an hour. Well, that'd be, that'd be evil if they asked you to go <laughs> and then made you eat a bag of dicks. It'll just happen anyway, because it's a fucking shite hole. But it's, it's nice. really not a shite hole. Yeah, but it's a shite hole it's, of comedy. No, you're just doing exactly what I said. You've just had some bad gigs, and now you hate the town. It's yeah. actually a really nice city. You've just had a couple of bad gigs, haven't you? No, I blame York. <laughs> yeah. I the lived, mayor. I lived there for a bit. It was nice. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, it was nice. Went to watch Adam. He was shit. <laughs> <laughs> really bad. Got another question for me? Hang on, give us two seconds. <laughs> Two seconds. Don't check your phone for no reason. You said I've got two seconds. You, you've t two seconds. I've done it. Two I've seconds. done it. Get off your phone. He's such a fucking belt. It's pointless. Uh, <laughs> Go on. Mate. Uh, Hurry up. He was doing a bit. Were you uh, just checking Supreme CBD? Nice one. Uh, Cy Harriman says, <laughs> would you rather have the pass of two half Cy? It's just fucking... Mate, him and that phone. I would ask the question. I would love it if you if you had this weird disease where you just made phones not work. I'd love to see what <laughs> you'd be like. You'd be like, oh my god, I didn't realise the ceiling's white. Oh, look at everyone. Who's that cunt with the curly hair? What's his name? <laughs> Finn. You, you you'd be like a kid who could see for the first time. You know those see the videos where they're like <laughs> they, the they put like the hearing aid in a little name. kid and they're like. <laughs> 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 Which, by the way, is if oh, you wa so if you nice. can watch that and not get a little like the first time I watched one of them, I was like choking up a little bit here. And some kid who has these weird goggles on, they're like, "This is Bradley's first time seeing." And he's like, "Mama, that's that would be if your just phone didn't work for like not even the whole day, twenty minutes." <laughs> I hardly ever look at that. Oh, right mate. Like when we're recording. Oh, when you're recording. Yeah. Thanks for giving us that. <laughs> what a fucking pro. <laughs> What's the fucking question? Cy Harriman. Would you rather have... Nice one, Cy. Nice one, Cy. Cheers, mate. Thanks for getting us back on track. Nice one, Cy. Thanks. Cy Harriman says, would you rather have two half-size <laughs> clones of yourself or one full-size clone of yourself? So you get clones. A full-size one? You want a full size or the two little ones? The only reason to have a clone is for when you don't go there to send them to do shit. You can't be sending a midget. They'll, people will clock onto it. No, a midget. Half size. It's just a half size. Half the size of me. <laughs> it's not. defo midget territory. <laughs> defo is. It, no, but it's not. It's perfectly, literally, just, you know, like model cars and model aeroplanes. Yeah. They're absolutely, all the, 
Oh, so it hasn't proportion. got like a big head in that? All the proportions are perfect. Right. It hasn't got a big head in that. Yeah, but they're still going to notice. My point still stands, doesn't it? I like, I'm not going to walk in half the size of me and then be like, all right, Dad, over here. No, if you get the two half-size clones, they can't leave the house. So what's the point? Or they could Because stand- it'd be fucking great having two little clones. Also, with clones, do you get to tell the clone what to do? Or, no, or are they, have they got independent thought? Just get them to stand on top of them, put a coat on. Perfect size. Yeah, but in the house, you can like... Head. Yeah, <laughs> Carl Darnley just fucking t- Edinburgh post there. Just go and tidy up till about that height. Just go. Yeah, no, they're I not slaves, a... are they? They're just other versions of you. It's to, like having a twin. That's to a, them, that's they're a real. nightmare. That, yeah, they they've got sentience. They think you're. The you clone. can't just tell them what to do. No, because they're a person to them. I wouldn't want any. I wouldn't want any, if. In fact, I'd want two half size clones because then everyone would know. Oi, they're little clones, aren't they? <laughs> Because if you've got another... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. You'd be walking down the streets all three, yeah? Some of us have been going, hi, mate, just check. They're little clones, aren't they? You've got yeah, yeah. Some, nice you've got, yeah. Are these your twins? <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> just <laughs> two small 40-year-old men. They're little clones, aren't they? That's what they are. They're little clones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, can I come with you, do? That's all I want. No, but if it, in a court of law, if the clone's like, hey, this is my house, everyone will be like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, right, this is my problem with the clone. You think the little clone is going to take you to court? (laughs) (laughs) Hang on! (laughs) If I've got another one. Your lawyer is going to go at them and be like, come on, mate. We're all mates here. You're fucking tiny. We can all see it. You're fooling. No one laughed. And there's fucking two of you. But if you, if you have another clone, if you had a full size clone, That's they come the in like. That's the stupidest thing you've ever said. Without a doubt. The worst thing is, it makes loads of sense in my head. That's it. Tell it to that. Makes loads of sense in my head. If you have another perfectly sized clone, the clone can be like, no, it's my house. And you can be like, no, it's not. You're the clone. You'd be like, nah, fuck off. You're the clone. And then Laura'd be like, I can't even tell. You both look like fucking bald middle-aged men. So that, I wouldn't, you wouldn't want that situation. But otherwise, there'd be two of them going, this is my house, this is my house. And Laura'd be like, hey, they're little clones, aren't they? And you'd be like, yeah. It's a good way of knowing that they're clones. <laughs> just trust them the clones. Do you, have to, do, you have to, do you have to feed the clones? Or can you be like, oh, just fuck off, you little weirdos. Oh, if you got two, lawyer, wouldn't oh, no. I can't understand. Hey. Little clones, aren't they? To the jury. Have a look. That made total sense. Yeah, clones, you can rip me all you want. Made total sense. <laughs> can you imagine getting sued by your, your own clone? Can you imagine getting sued by your own clone? Going, it's my life. What are you doing in my life? I'm not sure they'd waste their time in the court. Well, they just fuck off. Let's hear the the uh, the case of someone who thinks as clones now even taking over his life. Have yeah. you seen the Netflix series Living with Myself? Yeah, it's great. Have you seen Paul, it? Paul Rudd. No. Yeah. It's along these lines. So Paul Rudd goes Ashling to... Ashling B in it. Yeah. Yeah. So Paul Rudd goes to this like little sort of gaff. Oh, on It looks like a motel, doesn't yeah. it? Tom Brady goes, which is sick. Yeah. Tom Brady's in it. So he walks in and they go, basically, we can make you the perfect version of you if you want. Just come in here. And he goes and he, he comes out and he's like, what? Everything's sick. <laughs> That's it. Right. Yeah. His life's perfect. He's got more joy. He's what? Like, like colours are more vibrant. He loves his beard more. It's got better all day. that. But then that night, he knocks at his own door and he answers it. So and he's like, "What's going on?" And it turns out what's happened is he's gone in this gaff. Spoilers, by the way. He's gone in this gaff and they've cloned him and killed the shit one. And they make the clones like better. Oh. And they sort of imply, they sort of imply that that's how Tom Brady. So keeps keep, winning Super Bowls because as he goes oh, in, right. Tom Brady's coming out. That's the bit. Yeah, and he right. goes to Tom Brady. Is this your first time? And he looks at him and goes, <laughs> six. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's a re- it is a really good show. That sounds Paul like a good. Well. So end you go in me. with all your insecurities and your paranoia and your depression and you feel fucked and you feel forty four and you. Uh, and then they go, yeah, no worries, we're going to improve you. But what they're really doing is cloning you. And then in the cloning process, taking out all your anxiety or your depression or your self-doubt, and they're literally making you think that you're the new version. And then they murder the fucked real version of you. But they made the mistake they didn't kill him properly. That's why so he's gone wrong. So happy Paul Rudd gets fucking miserable original Paul Rudd. Yeah. And they both sort of share their life for a bit. Right. So Nightmare. this is massive spoilers now. Nightmare. And the at end the end of, of it, it's dead annoying. 
Because what happens is... Oh, no, 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 no. You can't do this. I might want to watch this. All right. Okay. All right. No, you can't. You should watch it. Though, you can't, good. like... That's a, that's too much of a spoiler alert. Okay. Can we, do you want to do it? If you're not going to watch... Like, we can say spoilers and tell them to skip 30 seconds. All right. You, I I want to watch it, so you do it. Chris, oh, Ak- la, Chris la, Akabusi la, la, comes... Chris Akabusi comes la, in. La, la, and, he, la, and he's la, swinging la, his fucking la, medals, la, knocks them all la, out, la, la, gets his dick la, out, la, shags la, Ashling la, B. La, la, she has la, a black baby la, and convinces Paul Rudd and the clone that it's la, their kid. La, 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 la. You finished? Yeah. La, la, sure? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, ah, got big ear holes. Yeah. It's, it's an ending that most people <laughs> don't see coming. <laughs> la, 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 la. It is. Ah, la, la, la. No, 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 la. we're not going to have any spoilers. Ah, it's, it's okay. It's quite left field. <laughs> yeah, you That's don't see it coming. Say. You really don't see it coming. There's no... And way. even now that people know what it is, if they watch it now, they'll, they'll get 10 minutes before the end and be like, where's all this going to come from? <laughs> Listen, I didn't even I didn't even hear it. <laughs> Chris Akabusi hasn't even turned up yet. <laughs> How's he turning up? <laughs> yeah. Is it Paul Rudd, Ashley and B, and Chris Akabusi in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Netflix have got some fuck uh, fuck you money, haven't they? They have, yeah. Right, Netflix, Paul Rudd's like, I've got this idea. And they're like, yeah, great. But we like Ashley and B and Chris Akabusi. <laughs> yeah. So write them in. And then right at the end, <laughs> Chris Akabusi's oh, we'll there. Oh, is it a wooga? No, it's John Fashner. Chris Akabusi's there. You're getting your athletes mixed up. I yeah, made that athlete. mistake in one of my first ever records. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've learned. At the end, Chris Akabusi's there with Ashlyn Bay and Paul Rudd, and they're all hugging. Oh, and then two half sized Chris Akabusi's walk in, <laughs> and Ashlyn B goes, They're little clones, they're mounting. Yeah. They're little clones. Little catchphrase. <laughs> it made total fucking sense, by the way. Total sense. What if you didn't get on with your clone? What if you, <laughs> what if you didn't get on with your clone? You'd want too many clones to be like, Yeah, I know he looks great. Looks <laughs> two little great, talented podcasters, but they're clearly clones. Stop fucking them, Laura. What if she what if she had a threesome with your two half sized clones? They'd make smaller ones like Russian dolls, wouldn't they? Oh, that'd be bad. And then you'd walk in on her getting double teamed by them. <laughs> and she'd be like, I thought it was you. You'd be like, no, they're little clones, man. Aren't they? They're they'd be climbing clones. all over her with a little with a little small bodies. She, how small would the dicks be? <laughs> she'd be there like I don't want to see that. <sighs> oh, <sighs> Dan, do you want to do some more? Yes. Do you? Hey, listen to this. This podcast, I've a word, yeah, is sponsored by beer52.com. And we have been for about a year now. They are our OG sponsor. And I've got to tell you about them. If you don't know who they are, they are the number one craft beer discovery club in the UK. What's a craft beer discovery club, Adam? Well, I'll fucking tell you, mate, okay? What they do is they help you discover craft beer. They send you different craft beers every month from all over the world. Different themes every month as well. You might get a month worth of South African beers. You might get some from Argentina the next month. You might get some from South Korea or something. All over the world, they'll help you discover the best craft beers that you've never heard of. And here's the best thing. Because you're a listener to this podcast, not only do you get a free case of eight beers and an award-winning beer magazine for free just by going to beer52.com slash word all you do pay the postage and packaging eight free beers free beer magazine and a little tasty snack as well and also it helps us out you support our sponsors they support us this thing can keep going we can keep the have a weird gravy train on the fucking track so go to beer52.com slash word right now and get yourself some bevies for nothing is it in focus carl this section in focus Got it in focus? Do you want to just double check that it's in focus? I double check it. Just you know, because last week it wasn't in focus. Oh yeah, that, I wasn't even getting at that. But yeah, oh, that's, in, are that's we in focus? in focus? So if anyone's watching this right now, they'll be able to see our faces, our expression. We want to be in focus. We want to be in focus. Yeah. Because do a- you want to be in focus? Yeah. The camera's fine now. Yeah. Is it? Is it in focus? Yeah. It hasn't messed up. No, no. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, good, if then. you listen on the audio, you don't give a fuck. <laughs> Uh, Stu- oh, shout out all the audio listeners we love you loads of you Stuart P says I heard celebs get given a black card for Nando so they can get free scran whenever even though they're minted and don't need the freebie if you could have a black card which chain restaurant would you go for and if you could get a black uh, black card for a clothes shop which clothes shop and if you could get a black card for a supermarket 
which supermarket? So you get three black cards. Oh, what a question. Not even as a celeb, just as you want. I mean, all right. As you are now, Rowie Bags. So you get you get you? restaurant, clothes shop, supermarket. Should we do it? Should we do restaurant together first? So just before we do it, I want to tell you a quick little story about so Chris Ramsey got a black card. Comedian. I honestly remember and it really hurt my feelings. And when he got it, his tour support act, who's a friend of ours who will be on that couch at some point, Carl Hutchinson. One also, of the best lads. One of the best lads in comedy. So sound. Not that Ramsey's a cunt or anything, but Carl Hutchison is a particularly lovely man. He got a black card too. And I remember going to the Nando's in Edinburgh, you know, just on the bridge, with Danny McLaughlin. Just Danny just texted me one day during the festival. I'm going to go get a Nando's. And we walk in. That mean, that is, if you're going to hang out with Danny Mack at the Fringe, it's yeah. going to be at a Nando's, isn't it? More than bars, pubs. Yeah. And uh, we walk in, and Carl Hutchinson is in front of us. Uh, but he's just leaving. He's just been there with, like, I think it's flyer and team. So he goes, what are you getting, lads? I'll get it. Right? And I knew what he was doing, because I knew he had a black card. But Danny McLaughlin didn't. Right? He had no idea. So it looked really, really strange. But I, I could see Carl was basically going, right, I've just got a meal for me and me flyer and team. Because I think you can get up to six meals on it. In a day. A day. So you can take five of your friends and go, this is all on this. And I think he'd just done it with like four of them or whatever. And I think you can only use it once a day. What, for up to six meals? That's right. Do you know what I mean? That's what I've heard. Um, Which is up to like, that could be like 70, 80, 90 quid, couldn't it? But you, you must be able to source, it must be on the, the Nando staff to clock you and go, you've already used yours. It mustn't come up on the thing. Right. Because we walk in and Carl's on his way out and he's like, oh, I'm having a little chat. And he goes, what are you getting? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to get uh, thighs and chips and garlic bread. Uh, Danny's like, oh, I don't know yet. And uh, Carl was like, tell me what you want and I'll get it. But he said it like, tell me what you want and I'll get it. Yeah. And Danny was like, what? And Carl goes, if you tell me what you want, I'll get it. And Danny was like, what's going on? And Carl was like, shut up. Just tell me what you want, and I'll get it. And Danny was like, "Mate, I know I'm doing like I, I'm I'm not selling out every day, but I can buy a fucking Nando's." <laughs> right? Can I just say this is classic Danny Mac? Like, why? What's going on? <laughs> like, I think I think someone's trying to take him down. I'd be like, "Here's my order." Like the first time, Carl went, "Do you what? What do you want?" I'd be like, "Are you sure?" And as soon as he went. Yeah, I am sure. I'd be like, wicked. Well, I think Carl's won the Euro Millions. Here's my order. But then I knew what Carl was doing. Yeah. Because I knew he had the card. So then I went to Danny. Lad, just shut up and tell him what you want. And he was like, no. no. You, you can't do that <laughs> to someone who's deeply paranoid. Because he's like, who's watching? I'm in a, I'm in a Nando's based Truman show. <laughs> just shut up and tell him what you want. He was like, no, I'll get me own. You can do whatever you want, but I'm getting my own Nando's. And I was like, he's got a fucking card. He's like, what? I was like, he's got a fucking card. It's like, I can't hear what you're saying. You're telling him, he's got a black card. <laughs> it's me from the black <laughs> uh, And in the end, he was like, I get it for free. And then I think, I can't remember, but I think Danny was like, oh, go on then. That's <laughs> <laughs> the most Danny Mac story ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Fuck me, Carl's a good lad, isn't he? Yeah. Nice one. And I... <laughs> what? <laughs> Said nice one. He's called Carl too, remember? Oh, he's doing <laughs> fancy. Yeah. What's his name? I thought he was being eggy again after that, like... After, I thought Carl was being weirdly... <laughs> nice one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On. <laughs> yeah, nice one. He's a good lad. It's a comedy podcast, Dan. <laughs> after, before you were like, I don't, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, it was a stupid thing to say. Oh my god! When you think your producer's like trying to passively aggressive mug mug you off, but I, I and he's a good looking lad as well. But he is one of the sweaters of the industry, isn't he? Yeah, he's he a, takes three shirts to every gig. Oh, it's just a and I've said it before. Jimmy McGee in a nightclub in Cardiff, looking great, sweating like a paedophile. Like it was so good. Maybe like, yes, mate. Maybe Thank he's a paedophile, and that's why he was sweating so much. Oh god, we were at a nursery. You didn't think. Um, that. So, restaurant. Well, I had a uh, I had a Five Guys last night, and I might put my oh, Nan Nando's is great. I might be putting my because we've got I've got Five Guys in Chester, 
and in Ellesmere Port, it's, and it's. Really Are we going handy. like fast food in Nando's? Five Guys? Does it have to be a chain? Can we go like our favourite restaurant? I think you can go your. F- I, I mean, he's he's put chain restaurant. All right. So I will. I will just because an independent's never going to go. Hey, Adam, we love you. <laughs> Family owned. Come eat here six times a day. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, funny you do that accent because on what day was it? When did we record here? Monday. 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 I went out with Sam to a place in Liverpool. She used to work there called Bacaro, which do Italian tapas. Beautiful. And it might... Have you been before? Maybe we go all the time. It might be my favourite restaurant. Went for my graduation. Been once, and I, I think it might be my favourite restaurant in Liverpool. Bacaro. Bacaro. Street. It, it was so unbelievably nice. I got some spicy sausage pasta, a fillet steak with prawns, and the sea bass. Ooh. And Sam, um, we got a meat board to share between us. You know, like all the it's like Italian shit. tapas. You've really been doing your bit for uh, hospitality, haven't you? Oh, mate, hospitality. If anything, needs to start doing me a favour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help out to eat out. Adam's just doing his one man version of it. I think I went out to eat Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. It's been a nightmare this pandemic, hasn't it? Yeah, you get through it, babe. Yeah. No, but that's because. Like yesterday when we went to that Five Guys, there's loads of people outside. It won't last forever, but you'd think for this summer, even if there's never any more restrictions and nothing goes wrong in, in, in the winter, like this summer should be the summer of, we can do stuff again. Like every chain restaurant at Ellesmere Port, they've got like a, a we've been there, haven't we, for a Nando's. Yeah. Outside the Nando's was busy. Outside the ZZ's was busy. Mate, ZZ's dying on its fucking hole. And there, loads of people are like, woo, we're out there. Like, every restaurant should be doing pretty well yeah. at the moment. Even Frankie and Benny's had people outside. Frankie and Benny's is not that good, is it? Frankie and Benny's feels like they just go to Iceland and microwave Pizza. like frozen pizzas and shit. I have yeah. never agreed with you more on this podcast. It's so bad. It's really bad. It's for kids' birthday parties when they're like 15, isn't it? 100%. I wouldn't even take my kids there. No, it's not. It's like easy, like, oh, yeah, it's only a quid a pizza. It's not like... It's I mean, so shit. Yeah, it is. So unbelievably can shit. I sh- can I a little shout out? Not everyone agrees with me on this. Still like going in a pizza hut sometimes. Like it's a bit vintage. It's a bit out of date now. Well, we've been to pizza hut, haven't we? I just kind yeah. of enjoy in it. And it was lovely. Kind of enjoy it. It's also, it's great fine. for kids. It is great for... Like, Etta loves going there because you get to make your own salad and you can shout and everything. Going to a, like a proper Pizza Express, you feel like everyone's going to be like, why did you bring children? But a pizza, pizza hut like, is a kid place over there because it's like Pizza Planet from fucking yeah. Toy Story and it? yes, it's mate. just like over the top thing. Um, I I might be putting Five Guys as my option because it's expansive. You'd be popular if you were like lads. Anytime you want to go, just hook me up. I can take five five of you with me. I I know it seems like such a fucking tap in. But it might have to be Mackey's. Lad, I was thinking Mackey's. It's so accessible. And They're everyone loves you. everywhere. Yeah. And it's a clever one because you're not having five guys for breakfast unless you're an animal. But you are having... Bre- I mean, I, I eat McDonald's more for breakfast than I do for, for mainsies. I think it's got to be Mackey's. Mackey's is defo. All over the world. In the conversation. Oh, yeah. God, there's a black card worker all over the world. Yeah, it's a good thing. Good yeah. thinking. Next time I'm in Nantucket. Yeah. Which Next one? time. <laughs> what did you say? Nantucket. Yeah. I From the favourite rhyme. The, the, the famous rhyme. Yeah. There once was a the woman in Nantucket who got fucked on a bucket. There were whalers up there. She'd come on the floor <laughs> so she couldn't no more. They took around my bucket. And that's the end of the rhyme. What you got? Around my bucket. Come on. Come on. And I said my dick's out now, sucker. <laughs> Great save. He was being he was being heckled mid poem. <laughs> now, that's it, you fucking poet haters, poetry haters. He was being heckled and he still he fucking blocked it out. Um Finn, come on, you've got a you've got a vote here. You, you've not got your own microphone, but you can share a call. See, until you said Mackey's, I Definitely was thinking not COVID safe. 100 percent almost famous. I was thinking it was a good shout. Mainly because when I go there. I just get the cheapest thing on the menu because I'm a skint student. The thing so, with Almost Famous is, Finn, though... you can't claim skint student Shh. totally, really, can you? Yeah. It, can you? I'm paying a lot of rent. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. still paying his ex-girlfriend's rent. He pays... Yeah. yeah. He pays his own rent. He pays his family's rent. 
right. and he's paying his dad's rent in Turkey. Yeah, it's all true. Yeah, but you earn more than my wife did at her job before she went on maternity leave. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, bro. Fair. I've not been oh. since since I've had this job. Carl, so. Laura yesterday went. Where's this come on bro thing from? <laughs> because you're saying it a lot. I'm like, I'm actually trying to say it less on the podcast because <laughs> I don't want to piss people off. I was like, it's from Carl. And she was like, eh, it's from Carl. <laughs> I'll be having words. Yeah. Um, um, almost Famous is a good restaurant, but is the one in real? Almost Famous is really good, but it's an effort. Like it's in e- Liverpool. Yeah. You've got to get a bath. <laughs> yeah. Right, actually, after you've got to take, you've got to at least take a flannel with you. Yeah, you can't go out after an almost famous. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You can't go to almost famous and then go on a nice house. You no. just can't do it. You can't have it in the car. You could never have an almost famous in the car. You'd have to get it validated six times. I, I have <laughs> to say that about shoestring onions. For five six guys, they make it like the old American takeaway burger. Yeah, and it, it is it, it is it's edible oh, it's, as a burger. Five guys is a really good middle ground between a. A proper gourmet burger gaff and a takeaway burger gaff. It's it's in that middle ground. It's really, really, really good. Expensive, but it's too expensive for what it is. Not if you've got a fucking black card. That's true. I think Mackey's Mackey's is is, is the one. It's worldwide in it as well. Mackey's, you can get chicken, beef, fries, fruit bags, milkshakes, milk, brekkie, fruit bags. If you want, if you're on a diet, yeah, fruit bags. Uh, Why is Mackey's good? Uh, Fruit bags. Yeah, yeah, they really, they do really well on the fruit bags. Yeah, what toys. Got, what have we got on the clothes shop then? Clothes shop. Because um, you want something that like kind of all encompassing. Selfridges. I mean, can you include the clothes shop though? Yeah. Well, they sell household items and stuff, don't they as well? They do, yeah. Well, I, I think. Just, I just use it on clothes. I think, yeah, I think it's so. The department store, isn't it? Cheating, no. So I can't be at the department store. I think maybe that is sort of yeah, because then you could take your black guard to. Uh, are you buying like a fucking Tory sieve? Because every time I think of like Selfridges for anything but like clothes, which are expensive, it's basically like, mm, I bought some coffee from the deli area and it's £42. Like it's, I think you could, yeah, they could argue that they'd be like, nah, mate, that's that's for clothes. I, I, is ASOS, is ASOS an option? Because motherfucker, that website's amazing. It's not a shop, no. All right. It's an online store, isn't it? All right, I, all right 2010. I get with it. I would go maybe All Saints. Right. Or Zara. I was about to say Zara. But I'd have a stipulation with Zara. I'm happy to pay half price if it counts as a, a queue skip. Because the queues to get in Zara just do me head in. Yeah. And it has to be a chain shop as well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, yeah I'll go yeah. to the Nike shop then. The night shop. You going JD? Yeah. Someone commented. Shoes, someone commented the, on the Patreon, and I apologize. I'm not gonna be able to find your name. Went st- literally went. Stop shopping in JD. They're the most Tory of all the sports shops. So p- apparently JD's getting some stick, man. Well, if you could provide us with another sports shop to go to, then uh, how was JD Tory? Yeah. In what way? Could you get? It's back just because it's a massive chain, isn't it? Maybe he's worked for JD and they're a bit pushy. Maybe Foot Locker would be an option. Foot Locker's good because they get some exclusive webs. They do get exclusives. JD's webs are shit. Yeah, they right. are. JD's and, and, webs, and webs. Everyone and webs in JD are is already wearing them. Yeah. Webs are shoes. Yes. Okay, good. There you go. That's one for the over I go for the Nike shop or the, the North Face shop. Probably the North Face shop, actually. Anyone thinking Primark in your head, sort your fucking head out. You've got a black card already. It's called yeah, a you'd, fiver. You'd be able to shop. <laughs> you'd be able to shop. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I was, I was like, I've got something. No, okay. <laughs> that was all right. You'd be able to shop in All Saints, though, like you shop in Primark. Just get in the bag. Fuck it. Throw the yeah, jeans yeah, on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I think these black cards would be so funny at Christmas when, when like, Adam was doling out his presents again. The first Christmas, everyone would be dead sound. By the second and third Christmas, like, all right, Adam, yeah. I wonder what this piece of clothing is. By any chance, it's from Zara. <laughs> Oh, you're so thoughtful, cunt. I bought some shorts from Zara the other day and it was absolutely infuriating when I got them home because I bought two of the exact same pair just in different colours. One blue, one like cream. And both bought 32-inch waist. One of them is a bit loose and the other one, I'd have to lose six stone to get them on. And the other one, I bought uh, a medium because my legs are quite like 
my, my lower half is quite small. I'm very sort of top heavy. Like a Robin Redbreast. So I bought a medium, nowhere near me. I might need the extra large. Like a Robin Redbreast. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect arch, isn't it? Yeah. Like a toffee apple. Sam said I look like Mike Wazowski. <laughs> Mike Wazowski. <laughs> I'm watching you, Wazowski. What are we going Always for? Always um, watching. Supermarket. I'm just going to go with like Asda. Can I use it online? Yeah. Waitrose then, innit? Go fucking posh if you're getting it for free. Hang on, we're going to Aldi though. What are you doing that for? I think Do same- you think the owners of Asda, the American Walmart owners of Asda, yeah. are any better? Than the owners of Waitrose. Yeah, because one by ours. I think Waitrose probably pay more tax in the UK than Asda do. So. Right. It's a British company, innit? Now that's why I don't use Amazon. Or the Waitrose sell, like, she. Um, game stuff and that. No. No. Ah, uh, you see, that's where, if you're playing the game, you want one of those supermarkets that have the got Walmart so and much fucking stuff. There's a, I went when I went to buy the car. There is a Tesco Extra off the M fifty M sixty in uh, near Stockport. Jesus Christ, that's a big fucking Tesco. That is like you're in a clothes section going. This is bigger than most clothes shops. And like, yeah, the, if you had a black card at one of them, I f- really feel like with Tesco, it's down the line of like they've got everything, but it's not cheap. But it's also, I think Waitrose can be a bit much when you want just fucking cheese. And they're like, oh, we've got this lovely brie. And you're like, I just want standard working class cheese, dickhead. I don't want it like with flecks of chili. You mean and cheddar? I, yeah, I just want... <laughs> but I, just sometimes like the meat counter in, in Waitrose is a little bit ostentatious. Like, oh my God, look at all these... All this, all this, yeah. all Have this you got any cooked ham? <laughs> Have you got any wafer thin? Yeah, honey roast ham. What's turkey ham? Yeah, what's working class cheese? You know, fucking this the cheese that's in a slice. This is a question. What is turkey ham? That has bugged me. Turkey ham for a long fucking time. Is Don't it? Google it. Don't Google it. Yeah, we're not going to ruin it. <laughs> what is turkey ham? Prince Charles. Uh, Do you know what it is? Can I it guess? Tastes horrible. I think is it like the is it turkey, but like just cut like ham. No, because then you get turkey cut like ham. It's called turkey. What's turkey? Well, what do they do to pork? To do they smush it into a massive cold sausage and then slice it, and that's Maybe how we get ham. You get a pig to fuck a turkey. That's it. That's what you were getting at. A turkey ham. Why isn't it a turkey that fucked a pig? Because pigs are bigger, so more likely that they're doing the bumming. <laughs> that is a. That's a different bit of imagery, that, isn't it? <laughs> the I, I would honestly rather go back to talking about the queen getting all them dicks than thinking of a turkey getting, like, the poor turkey. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. <laughs> oh. So what's turkey on? <laughs> <laughs> Just the um, weird fucking winged pig that comes out like... <laughs> oh. Yeah. And just, the farmer's like, just kill it and put it in a fucking sandwich. Yeah. Google it now. Let's see what it actually is. Right, let's see. So Adam okay. thinks it's... Turkey ham's turkey coming up on the Google. <laughs> this is what Finn does for a job. He puts turkey ham into Google. <laughs> Type in what is turkey ham. Yeah. Turkey ham is processed meat, primarily cooked or cured turkey meat. No, it was. And water, because that really adds to the meat, doesn't it? All it's that turkey. water. Formed into the shape, the shape of, of ham. a ham. I was fucking right. What's a ham? You know, like a ham. Oh, like a gammon. Yeah. There you I go. Fucking, I was right by accident. Bell so, what are you going as there? I'm going Sainsbury's. I like Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's is good. Nah, I got in it. You could cheat the system there. No, I, that, I think that I don't think your black card would work there. Maybe. I think they'd have you on a technicality. That's like Separate the tills, isn't that's it? like the McDonald's that's in an Asda. You can't get your Mackey D's and then take it to the Asda tills, can you? No. Mm. Come on, guys. Very serious. I I, I would go Waitrose just because I want the. The free Tory scan because I like good bread. Very, really good bread. You can get a good rye. Make a Reuben with it. Yeah, you've really come a long way, you and your kid. <laughs> Not, I've seen the pictures that we've been putting on the Have a Word Instagram. Oh, follow me on Instagram at Dan Has a Podcast. I've got way more followers than my sister, and she's been working really hard to be an influencer for the last seven years. And I got Instagram a year and a half ago, and because of this podcast, it's doing really well. And I really, I don't, I'm not even that asked about Instagram. I just think it's entertaining I'm Adam to Rowe, wine myself. 
on uh, Instagram. Adam Rowe com- at Adam Rowe Comedian mm. at Dana has a podcast, mainly to wind someone up. But they've been putting pictures of like when they were kids up. Like That's my the stories party. of like That's you awesome. banging That's out awesome. pound coins from the back of a TV. Yeah. And now you sat here going, I think I'd choose Waitrose. You know? Do you know what I remember the other day? Mm. I, I seen You've someone done well. like, You've come up, lad. I seen like there's this I won't name her. Cause she's fucking dead annoying. But there's a a, a, a female can oh. <laughs> Do you know I put that back on and tightened it and you're like you've yanked it out. Yeah, well I I move it, don't I? Well go for a break in a minute. And also I feel a bit like Freddie Mercury at the minute, so you know, you win some you lose. Oh some. we need it. Who's got Prince Aids now? I've just seen a couple of whingy comedians. Oh, I see. I see what happened there. Go he on. wasn't Prince, was he? They were different people. Just, just, <laughs> did, not they a were seri- different people. Just an AIDS joke. <laughs> it was just an AIDS joke. Let it go. Um, I, uh... <laughs> You're a fucking mess, bro. What the fuck? Look at you. I am... Um, reporting here from the 1948 World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> There's four teams in the group stages. Italy, oh, Uruguay, Why did England. they all sound like that? Yeah. Did they put it on? And uh, Queen Margaret. It's <laughs> like radio people. Pri- Why do they all sound exactly the same? Princess Elizabeth is taking so many dicks in the middle of the pitch. She's swallowing all the cocks of the Uruguayans. But not many people know it's her because she is dressed as Heath Ledger's <laughs> Joker. Well ahead of her time. <laughs> I don't even get the reference. <laughs> <laughs> She's just had some Prussians just on her face. Um, yeah. What was I talking about? Yeah. I, I seen someone moaning about like... This is so retarded. How, uh, <laughs> how, uh, how the pandemic's done that. I didn't, it's an open spot comedian whinging that they've worked dead hard and they're dead middle class and posh and annoying. I've worked dead hard and now I just feel like it's all in the bin. And I was just like, oh, shut up, you fucking cunt. Just shut up. Was this on Instagram? It was on Sutton. And it just done me head in. Because I remembered how... I, I often forget how sort of shit it was at the start of stand-up. Do you know what I mean? Where you're begging for gigs. You're not getting the ones you want. There's people who aren't as good as you getting gigs over you. That's because, awesome. like, they know the promoter better or whatever's going on. And then I remembered... I was talking to you about this a couple of weeks ago. My dad, at one point, when I first started stand-up, couldn't afford the internet. We didn't have the internet in the house because my dad was that skin because he was on benefits and he was ill. And I used to have to go and stand outside the Ladbrokes on Muirhead Avenue and steal their internet to apply for gigs. And then I remember that when I seen this person going, the, 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 the pandemic has really made it hard for me as a gig. Yeah, we know. It's made it hard for everyone, you stupid posh cunt. Until you stood outside the Ladbrokes in the rain applying for a gig that you're not going to get. Suck my dick. Yeah. I want to live closer than the Ladbrokes. Oh, I live closer to yours than that block. Yeah, but I couldn't stand outside yours. I think I came in, though. That is it. <laughs> Mate, I really want that in the autobiography. Yeah. I want the tale of you having to check if you've got a gig or not by standing outside a fucking Labrook's window, yeah. stealing the internet. Yeah. And now I'm sat here in a jumper that costs too much money with a fake Rolex on. And a fucking mic stand that you've Doesn't yanked wear. off the table. Mm. <laughs> it feels like you're going to interview people like you're doing Vox Pops. What do you think? Um, Should we have a break? Because you've. We're, we're uh, I'm hungry as well, you know. I'm starving, mate. Starving. Should we go for lunch? Yeah. Got Sam Avery in today, aka the Lane Appearance, Scouse comic. Helped me out a lot when I started. Oh, he's a good guy. What's happening, guys? Ooh, look at your outfit. Shocking. You look horrible in that. That's a shit t shirt, jumper, dress thing, whatever that is you've got on. What you need, lad, is a fucking t shirt or a hoodie from haveawaredpod.com. You want some official Have A Word merch? Go to haveawordpod.com and get some then instead of wearing that fucking shite you've got on. It's horrible. You look a joke. Don't believe in the house like that. You want a hoodie that says rat? That's what you need, lad. Go and get it. Haveawordpod.com. Well, because last week I started talking you were like, why do you always start like that? And I thought, I'm going to let Adam take the fucking... It's because you went, hello. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. You didn't it? start by saying anything funny or interesting. You just went... Hello! It made you look like a twat. It made me feel awkward. Carl was upset. He texted me about it. Yeah, I texted him then. He is a prick sometimes, isn't he? God bless him. I'm <laughs> financially tied to the cunt, but he is a massive bell with sometimes. Hiya, Sam! <laughs> Hiya. How are you doing? You all right? You're all right. <laughs> nice to see you. It's isn't it? To ignore the guest for at least 30 seconds. You know seconds. It's nice yeah. to see behind the curtain, though, and see how you really get on with each other. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. 
People think we ignore the guests for an hour and a half. That oh. made me really laugh when someone commented on the Jamie Webster episode and said, why didn't he talk for an hour? Like, mate. we don't know, mate. We, I, we know. To get him I know we're not showing an empty couch for an hour and 10 minutes, but come on, guys. You know, you must know. Well, I thought it was a bit rude that you left a guest just sat there for two full fucking sections. Um... Nice to see you, Sam. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's love this setup's absolutely lovely. It's nice than my house. And I <laughs> still nice love my house. I love it when people love it as well. Yeah, I'm yeah. still I'm proud of uh, proud of this than anything I've got at my house. Because we're used to it now, aren't we? We just turn up and it's like. Remember when we used to walk in at the start and be like, "Oh, I fucking love it here." Yeah. And we still do that, but like it, used to, it was like a novelty at the start. If you ever have a sleepover, like please put me on the list. Because yeah. I would, I would come and like I don't even mean to be, you know, aired. I'm not trying to get extra promo. I just want to sleep here. It feels like a <laughs> mate, that <laughs> is a fucking corking idea. That'd be is it? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll tell you where it falls down immediately. <laughs> Bags you on the couch. Where are you sleeping? I bring bring a blow up bed. And where are you putting it? Behind the desk. <laughs> if only I was a half size clown. I've <laughs> got I've got loads of camp and stuff I can bring. I, we put a tent up in our house last week, just in the because we're bored because it's locked down. There's nothing to do, so we just put a tent. You up. You put it in the house. In the, in the room, it was a bit big. It was bigger in the room, so it didn't quite. Go just to properly. entertain the kids, you were like, "Fuck it, we're going to go tent in house." Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, just Sam. The kids slept in it, but then I got in it the next day when they were just playing somewhere else, and I just lay in it for a bit. I zipped it up, and I was just like scrolling through Facebook for about twenty minutes. I was just... thinking about something along these lines last night, right? <laughs> Look. How old are you, Sam? I'm 42. And you're 40. 40. So at any point, and I imagine after that, what you've just said, the answer's no. But do you ever feel like an adult? Because no. I don't to this day. Like I was screaming at my Xbox at one o'clock this morning. And I had a moment where I was like, I wonder if this will ever, I'll ever grow out of this. Mate, I, I in my head, I'm 24. That's the eight. Everyone's got yeah, 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 yeah. 24 is mine. Spot now, I'm 18. And I'm now 19. exactly, yeah, people have got different ages. I spoke to a woman once at a gig and I was trying to get this bit going and I said, you know, it, she looked about 60. I said, how old are you? I don't want to ask, but you know, how old are you? She went, I'm, I'm 63 or something. I said, have you got an age you always feel you're, you're at in the head? And she said, I've never, uh, I never really feel a day over about 40. Hmm. And I was like, 40? That doesn't really, you know, get to me point, really. Because I, I thought everyone felt young, but she felt middle-aged constantly. But And how old was she? She was about 60. <laughs> but maybe, it worked, maybe, 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 but that's like the sort of like 20-year factor. Maybe, yeah. 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 How old do you feel? I think 20, because me and Sam are basically the same age. We started out together in stand-up, but you started maybe a year or about so a year after, after me. after you, yeah. Yeah, I remember you turning yeah. up at the Frog. We've lived a fucking similar gig, haven't we? You had kids earlier than me and everything, but... Yeah. I think 24, 25 is that, that I don't feel loads different. This is when it's bad when you see someone on TV and they're like, oh yeah, like Rachel's 14. You're like, she's fucking ancient. And then I have to say like, Laura, do I look that old? She's like, no, but you can tell. <laughs> she's thinking, yeah, mate, yeah. you're 40 and you've not looked after yourself. Gareth Barry, the, the football player, was like, oh, he's so old. He's, he's like three years younger oh, than me. <laughs> And it's horrible. Being an NFL fan is brutal. They're talking about Ben Roethlisberger. He's like 39. They're like, he's ancient, mate. Yeah. He's nearly dead. I'm like, he's a year below me it's at horrible. school. Yeah. It's when I see people who I knew when I was young, who I haven't seen for a while. Like on Friday last week when I went out, uh, there's a lad who was my mate's younger cousin. And he used to play footy with us, but he's quite good at footy. He's about six years younger than us. But like, he was good. So when we were like 16, even though he was 10, it wasn't ridiculous that he was playing with us, you know what I mean? And uh, he comes to me and he's like, you don't remember me, do you? And I was like, eh, oh, Scott, it's Scott, isn't it? He was like, yeah, I've been watching your podcast, that it's good, isn't it? And I was like, how old are you now? And he said, whatever it is, like 22, 23. And I was like, you're 11 and you always will be 11. Absolutely. <laughs> my, sister's, my sister's best mate, her younger sister has gone through a divorce and I haven't really seen this girl since she was about nine. And in my head, a girl in a primary school uniform has just gone through a nasty divorce because she's always going to be little yeah. in my head. It's but weird. it's the weirdest thing. You're like, yeah, yeah, she's 34. I, I forget what I look like, though, as well. I forget I'm bald sometimes. And I have to, I, I see like a picture of myself and I go, oh, yeah, I've got no hair. And I've been bald for <laughs> many, many years. Or for a big moment for me in terms of like realizing how old you are is I needed glasses, I think, for about five or six years before I actually got them. So I was like driving and I was, I was, I didn't have a sat nav. I used to print off the, you know, the AA roadmap like things. This is how long ago it was. <laughs> and I'd be driving and I'd be like looking and. My eyesight was terrible, and finally I went Are to the you getting headaches? Oh, it was awful. Yeah. yeah. And what's it called where you, is it a, 
I was going to say stigmata then. That's the other <laughs> thing. Isn't it? What's the, stigmatism. What's the, stigmatism, yeah. When, I had a stigmata. <laughs> I had these fucking holes in each hand. Jesus. And I thought, I need fucking bifocals. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'm the Messiah. So, yeah. Nightmare day. Because as we know, Jesus' vision was uh, not as great <laughs> as it was. No. Uh, so I, I, uh, I got glasses and I put the glasses on. And for the first time in a long time, I could see the world the way it's meant to be. And I was like, oh my God. And then I looked in the mirror and I saw me face the way it was <laughs> for the first time. I was like, fuck, I have been partying far too much. Yeah, in I'm HD. quite happy to just stay partially blind, I think. I think I'm really handsome. Good Wait, so Sky you. Sports, it's when Sky Sports News went into HD, yeah. I think they sacked half of the girls that worked as like the sports <laughs> news readers. All of a sudden you were like, mate, she's dead fit. And then HD, you're like, Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Kirsty Gallagher. Half of them are on OnlyFans, and half of them are on the Tiller Pound Bakery. Oh, mate. Kirsty <laughs> Gallagher's still got it. I buy a vanilla slab of her on a day. Yeah, um, that awful thing where you just feel like a certain age, but then there's moments, like that moment with the Xbox or the PlayStation, like those moments still happen because you're like, oh, I'm just a big kid. But then there's moments when you're like, you get the like utility bills in. And you've already paid it because you've been dead organised. And you're like, what the fuck? I'm not. I, there's moments where, like, I drive into B and Q and I find parking really easy. I'm like, oh, B and Q is quiet. I'm like, oh, it's cre it creeps in. I yeah. like the, the boring the dad shit sort yeah. of creeps in. I You're went, still a young bell end, but you can you catch you doing these moments. Going brilliant. We got the primary school we wanted. Like, oh fuck. I idiot. went to the Asda at a quarter past three yesterday afternoon, which is when everyone's picking the kids up, and it was fucking empty. And I knew it would be. And literally on the way there, I was like, it's going to be dead here because everyone's picking their kids up or at work. And as I turned in, I was like, yes. And then I had a little moment with myself where I was like, you just silently on your own in your car celebrated there being more than normal car parking spaces available. Yeah, it's but it's, those it's, little moments. It's not even the things that you're doing. It's the fact that you're getting the same thrill out of doing those mundane adult things that you used to do for like, you know, going out and meeting people and standing on a podium and getting off your head or... Like I, I chatted to the bin man the other day. My green bin was too was too full because I've been. They don't they don't empty. That I realised we're going into very boring territory, and that's <laughs> precisely the point. They don't empty. They don't empty the green bin. And if you're watching Joe Anderson, why? Because you're not uh, in charge anymore. Um, <laughs> but they don't empty the green bin as much as they should over like the winter period. So it had been about five months, and I've been putting like potatoes in there, cauliflowers, and all the scraps and all that because I'm you know. That's the thing. I'm like, because you've got an allotment. Good. It's good for the air, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> and it's then, biodegradable. Yeah. When when it, like our neighbour puts the bins out, um, my, my wife doesn't know that, so I still get the benefits. But um, sorry, you have got a neighbour that puts your bins he puts, out. He puts my bins out. Does he, he put them back? He puts them back. He's eighty four. Fuck is this guy? His, his name's Don, and oh, I'm God. sure he Don, do. the eighty four year old retired bin man who yeah. can't let it go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, Don't worry, Sam. Just, <laughs> I got one more case in me. Um, <laughs> I've had two hip replacements, but I'll do the work. Yeah. Maybe. Let me back, Chief. I've still got it. But um, so I. He, he actually knocked on my door and said, I'm really sorry, Sam, but I, I can't put your bins out this week. And I thought he was going to be, you know, some big reason. And he just said, it's too heavy. I'm 84. <laughs> and he said, my son tried and he can't, couldn't move it either. Did so you I, sack him? So I, I, I just said, so I'm gonna have to, you're going to have to move out, Don. You're going to have to live somewhere else. So I moved it. And then the bin men came. And then the bin lorry, I saw that they couldn't move it. So I ran out and I went... <laughs> it's it, getting like an articulate... Honest, <laughs> honest to God, it's like... And, and I said, you haven't emptied my bin. And uh, he said, oh, it's too heavy. It's health and safety. I said, well, what if I bring it to the to the van? And he went, go on then. And I, and I took it to the van. And uh, and he said, the van might not lift it up. It might be too heavy. And it, but it lifted it up. And then I, I brought it back to the house. And as I walked back into the house, I thought, pretty good story to tell me mates that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fucking not. And now I'm telling it on a podcast. Hey, that's how bad it is. Not only are you having those little moments, you're going, that is an anecdote. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll wait till I'm talking to at least 30,000 people using the internet. <laughs> that oh, is lovely. Oh, what Jesus. the fuck would you have done if they hadn't taken it? What are you meant to do with a heavy bin? That's what's going through my mind. The amount of shite in there, not to mention the bodies, but the amount of stuff in there, I was thinking I'm going to have to like take bits of it in my car. It's going to stink out the car. You sexy motherfucker. Where well, you going, wouldn't Sam? You just, Go for another tip trip. Wouldn't you have just shoveled it into the purple one at the bottom? Below your bin bags. Could have done. Can't take advice from Adam. This is what Adam would do with that green bin when it got too heavy. He put it in the garage, 
put fucking petrol on it, burn it, and the garage, and then be like, yeah, council deal with that. Yeah. I'll get a Mexican in a fucking forklift to come and deal with it. He wouldn't. I, no. What he'd do is he'd buy a new bin and just completely forget about that one. But I mean, that would be option two, to be fair. <laughs> but what I would do is get a shovel and dig half of it out <laughs> into the purple bin, cover the purple bin with all me bags. Normal waste. Yeah. Wrapper. That yeah. black bin liner. Just hide the rubbish and then they'll tip it in. And then as the mud's going in, it's too late, isn't it? Because the bin's already upside down then. Ah, that's mud! Yeah, yeah. Like, ah, bye, it's your mud now. Too late, I'm back at the house, shut the door. Yeah. And then next week you do it again. No, no just well, get... the next week they can, they'll can they be able to move after the bin, won't they? Yeah. So, yeah. Possibly. It's like, you should all looking at me, <laughs> expecting me to be a fucking moron here. I don't think, think you do any of that. I think you just give up on the green bin. Yeah, you just buy a new bin. <laughs> Adam, where's your green bin? It's over there. It's been there since 1994, and I'm not touching it. I've got to say, I was just filled with too much panic to have the, the foresight to think about options. You're, you're talking about option one, option two, which is admirable, but I was just like, oh, I just, I almost started begging with the guy. Look, like, oh, what am I going to do? Please, please. I'll fuck your dick, man. What I'd actually do. <laughs> <laughs> from the head of the What I'd actually do is steal a neighbour's bin and already have the numbers to paint on it so that I could be like... <laughs> Got 34 on it, mate. Like, that is gangster. my bin. What, and when, when they're like, Have which neighbour? My... Which neighbour? Any. A vulnerable one. I'd, I'd pick one with a, one of the numbers the same, so you only have to use less paint. Oh, yeah. You could just get a 14 or a 24. I would fucking lose my shit if one of my neighbours pulled that shit. But, <laughs> but they can't do anything, because I'd just be like, it's my bin, and they'd be like, prove it, and I'd be like, it's got 34 written yeah, on but it. But then, what about the bin that's full? Are you claiming that's theirs? No, yeah. I'd just be like, I don't know who's done that. <laughs> <laughs> I was there when I moved in. I'm not, that's why I don't move it because it's not my bin I didn't put anything in it it was there when I moved in the landlord won't do anything about it and they had two bins as well and you moved in Adam's done fly tipping on his own fucking road <laughs> moved it slightly <laughs> off his property going that's not mine don't know what that is it's gone someone has come and nicked my green bin filled it put it there not mine I'll tell you what I often have to do because I um, I'm I'm what you would call uh, <laughs> lenient with recycling <laughs> Yeah, that, I, I would uh, not. Which, which no, way? no, 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 no. That's not what I would call you. <laughs> I would call you a fucking purple bin legend. Yeah. Everything, a bit of plutonium, in it goes, <laughs> wrappers, Look, cabbage. If it's recycling bin week, then I will make an effort to put the stuff in the recycling. Hey, you've made, stop projecting on me. No, I will. You don't need to. I'm telling you the truth. No, you're not. I am. You're telling yourself a lie. Look, if there's a pizza box, it's easier to just put it in the blue bin than fold it and put it in the bin bag anyway. Right. So it's straight in the blue bin. But <laughs> I'm sorry to have dragged you down into this road. No, I, <laughs> what, it, what? Adam's recycling or lack of it is really entertaining. <laughs> he had to pay someone to come and empty his garage because he'd been using it as a big excess bin site. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I've got to say, I would watch like a Netflix program about bin politics on a, on a cul-de-sac. <laughs> would you? I would, yeah. yeah. No one be. else would. That would be Netflix having done every murder in history. Got first, nothing left, yeah. <laughs> Do you know, there was this six week, bin week. <laughs> there was six bins in Japan, you know? Six. Shut up. Yeah. And if you put the wrong thing in the wrong bin, you get a letter through your post. You have to kill it, yourself. Where's that? It's Japan. Like, it's like an honest in system, isn't it? And if you did it again, they'd come and knock at your door and go, we're not taking your recycle next You're not taking your bags next week. You get a yellow they'd, note. They'd come and knock and tell yeah. you. You get a yeah. just so you know, lad. You get, a, you get a letter from the emperor. Shame on your family. You All of a sudden, Takeshi's castle makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you have put um, a munch bunch. No, but what I often have to do <laughs> is my purple bin will be full on purple bin week, and I'll have like two, three bin bags that are full yeah. that won't quite fit in it. Yeah. So I just wait until about midnight. Adam, and I go and put them own. in other no people's Oh, I do that. that I, already out. I do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do yeah, that. It's bad form. But no, it, why if, is it bad form? If room, why not? No, it's... It's just annoying. I did Why it once. Why is it annoying? It affects their life in no way whatsoever. They're already asleep or dead. Yeah, I suppose. Just Fair after enough. Christmas, Still you know, when you got yeah. all the all the bottles, the recycling, I had three empty bottles of whiskey that I had to put in and, and loads of other shite. And I had my headphones in and I, I listened to... I love how you to... said Christmas as if, like, for me, that couldn't be a yeah, Tuesday in yeah. June. Just, just <laughs> random. Yeah. What's the big occasion? Well, it was sunny, wasn't it? So, uh, or it was rainy. Yeah. Or it was overcast, so I thought I'd have a drink. But I... I uh, I, I accidentally ended up listening to, uh, as I was going through neighbours' bins, putting other stuff in, in their bins under the cover of darkness, I was listening to Creedence Clear, Clearwater Revival run through the jungle, which is a proper, like, you know, down, 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 like you, you're actually going on a heist or something. <laughs> you put and, you oh, put literally your own theme music. I felt alive for, your, yeah. <laughs> for the first time, perhaps ever. Sam, you have magic. the most 
been anecdotes of anyone uh, on the I'm pod. done now. I've got yeah, two. But <laughs> they're, they're the two. Wait, wait, till, wait till Scott Bennett hears about this. No, be no. fucking gutted. Yeah. Maybe you, we could collab. I want to go back to, you mentioned before, that you forget that you're bald. Yeah. But you suit your bald, don't you? Thanks. So. Yeah, you do. do? I think I do. And I just want to know, at what point you made the decision to go, I'm bicking it. Have I ever known you being, when I'm, I've been bald? What, Did what? I have hair when I first met you? Is a better way of phrasing that question. It was I think you had a little bit. Right. I think you were still. Yeah. Yours went in about two, 2010, yeah. I reckon. I was. That's I was, when I started. Yeah, I, I probably kept my hair longer than I should have done. I say hair, literally singular. Okay, so uh, it, it is, is a good frame of reference for you. The press shots you were using, you can slide one of these in. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> with, with the ones of you with the banana. Yeah. A Labour You've government got a bit was of hair on them. Labour government was in in power when that was taken. That was two thousand and eight. <laughs> that was two. That was a long time ago. But they're the ones that were like yeah. So that's that's how I remember you as when I started. Yeah, yeah. I, I I kept my hair longer than I should have done because it was because I'm tall. Yeah. So less people saw it. But I always say this to anyone. <laughs> Just walk around, you know, don't, don't I, honestly, but I, I never to, booked gigs in where there was a balcony. Yeah, I just wouldn't. No do balconies, it. and no. Who's on, who else on the bill? Is uh, how tall are they? Yeah, I can't, not, I can't do it. I'm not busy. gigging with Rigglesworth. Yeah, can't, can't do it with it. And he's got a crack and barnet as well, hasn't he? So I always say to anyone who's on the fence about that, being bald is great. Going bald is horrible. Because yeah. once you've made that decision, it's yeah. great. And I had a chat in a pub with a guy one Christmas and we just got, you know, me and my mates were in one corner and they were next to us and I got chatting to him. And it was dead hot and he had like a, a coat on and a hat. And what's going on with your hat? He went, oh, I'm losing my hair. I said, well, just, just pick it off, mate. Look at me. At me, I was like a trendsetter for him, and he was looking at me going, I haven't got the guts to do it. And I felt like I gave him like a motivational talk to do it. And I felt like, an, a, like what it must feel like for like an older gay man yeah. to talk to a younger gay man about coming out the closet. I don't want to make this bigger than what it was. <laughs> it's just the same, it's exactly Mom, the same. Dad, sit down, I've got something to tell you. <laughs> I'm coming out as bald. <laughs> we know, son, we've <laughs> known for a long time. <laughs> We've suspected it for years. I've been lying to myself. Uh, when you um, came out of your bedroom at seven with a shower cap on, we were like, <laughs> son, you've got a 14 inch forehead. We know. <laughs> so I was absolutely bladdered and I left the pub feeling like I'd made this big impact on this young individual and he probably just thought I was a dickhead, didn't he? It's very yeah. rare. He's Someone gay now. He's gay. <laughs> so yeah. I think he misunderstood <laughs> what you were talking about. You just need to fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm be bald. It's very rare someone looks stupid bald, but it's very easy to look stupid balding. Oh, yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. When it's like just like the middle of your head backwards. Yeah. And it, your airline's like, you know, waving at you and that. You you get, you, to be called a baldy when you, because I shaved mine off when I was 23. Right. And I remember being on the train over to Leeds and it was brutal. There'd been like a, a concert of all the X Factor or like, I was probably 2006, 2007. And there was loads of, <laughs> like brownies and girl guides in the troupe who'd all been and I was they were just dominating the carriage and I was getting fucking heckled by like 10, 11 year old girls going Baldy like just oh. getting shit when you're that age you're like oh why I'm a bald yeah. at 23 by the time you get to 30 and you're losing your hair as long as you shave it off you're like yeah I'm just yeah. bald like it's, it's fine it's when you're a bit younger and it's going that's the hard bit. Did you but have I, nice hair? Did you have nice hair when no, you still had I it? I was balding. I was, I was trying to spike it up. I look at pictures of myself and I'm like, for fuck's sake, Dan, what were you you're just uh, doing a futuristic Bobby Charlton? Dan, <laughs> instead of going sideways, I was going up like, fuck at it. Dan looks like he was stood directly in front of the sun from the Teletubbies. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Bad. But, yeah. it, but when you get to a certain age, you're like, yeah, it don't matter. But my, my hair if you're shocking. denying it, if you're denying it, people can rip you. Oh, yeah. Like, if you're in your 30s still going, no, still got it, still got it. Yeah. Rip, that's not a good There's look. A guy I'm that... terrified of going bald because I've got an enormous head. <laughs> yeah, and it's so just going to look ridiculous. But your hair is regenerating. <laughs> you've got Benjamin Button fucking you've hair. Got, you've got beautiful hair. I really I... want to rip it, but it looks better every time I see the fucker. Do you know what you'd look like? Have you seen American History X? Yeah. You're the big fat fella. Fuck off. Oh, his head. You wouldn't look like him. You'd have his head. No. You wouldn't look like him. You'd just look like his head. <laughs> you, know, apparently. you know in that film? You know the big fat fucker? And then the most brutal pause is everyone's like, bloody hell, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, his head. Not his body. Don't even want, I don't even know what to say to that. I think I would look like um, 
meatloaf in 51st State. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not such a That's bad better. look. <laughs> Everything about you so <laughs> It's a bit late now, isn't it? We're 29 and we've still got solid hairline. Mate, you're solid. Don't worry about it. Also, if it starts thinning in your 30s, that's that's life. It's when it, it's going in your twenties when you're meant to be young and virile, and you're like, "What the fuck?" But as soon as you pick yeah. it off, then you don't have to spend money on shampoo, product. Every time you wake up, you're like, "Bang!" Like that, th you could literally that hair that you wake up with in the morning is exactly how you'd have it on your fucking wedding day. It, like there yeah. is no prep, no effort. My, there are some advantages. My wedding photos, I look horrendous because I was still cling cling it on. That was probably about a year before. So when, when did I get married? About eight years ago, and. Uh, my wife saw a picture of us on our wedding day and she, she looked at it and she looked at me and she said, oh my God, you look worse then than you do now. Which I thought was a horrible way to phrase that. She could have yeah. said, you look better now than you and did you then. Yeah, she it's, said, so, it's so subtle, isn't it? Yeah, you look worse then than you do now, implicating that I look terrible now, but I looked fucking way worse then. <laughs> it's like horror. I was like, you could have just pick your sentences a little bit better. Once a week I go on my Facebook memories and there's a picture of me or me and Carl from when we were like 18, 19, 20, 21. And Carl hasn't changed much since he grew his beard, but before his beard looks a bit like... I just look the same without a beard. You don't. And I've got short hair. It's because I've got don't. short hair. You look really stupid. <laughs> 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 you know that fella on American History X? <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like him. <laughs> you look like Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why people make the... With the weddings, like, they absolutely go out of the way to make themselves look the best they've ever looked. And then you get married, have kids, and then you start looking terrible. So... I think you've sort of cheated that. That's a great way of looking a bit yeah. shit on your wedding day. Means every time you look at those pictures, like, do you remember our wedding day? Fuck, I look great compared to then. Like yeah. everyone else is like, I, I went to the gym for ages. I ate well. well I just really look good. And then after that, life just like tubs you out. Oh, I think it's really, really funny on wedding pictures when the bride has quite clearly just not had a carb for eight weeks and she just looks <laughs> a bit ill. <laughs> yeah. She looks like Bob Geldof. She'll be stood She's next like, to it. I'm not yeah. obvious day in my life because <laughs> Skinny I am. Yeah. <laughs> she just needs some soup. Something inside so strong. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You need that plane as the face. I dance. didn't I didn't eat on my wedding am I like I'm pretty chilled out about a lot of things, but I did not have any breakfast. I was just running on adrenaline. You're excited, you're a bit like, oh fuck, it's gotta go well. And then started boozing, and then the excitement and the booze was getting me through, picked at a bit of the food for the wedding buffet. By the time the wedding finished, it was like, we got back to our hotel at 1.30 and you're like, oh, first night of marriage. What did you do? Did you make love? Was it really passionate? We got the biggest load of takeaway ever. <laughs> Laura in her wedding dress, me fucking suited and booted. We got two pizzas. We got two kebabs. And it was just like a weird come down from excitement. Yeah. And she'd done that. She'd not eaten properly for ages. I'd not eaten properly that day. And I didn't know, I just, we, that's so life, isn't it? Like, you expect it to be this, like, I love you so much, babe, let's, like, make love. I was just a bit pissed, eating a kebab, watching a woman in a fucking thousand-pound dress eat a kebab. It was just a really weird release. Getting tahini sauce all over the veil. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, I, love, I love you, yeah. You look worse it's then. mad how expensive know. wedding dresses are, isn't it? Considering they only wear them once. It's a bit of a, uh, the it's, whole wedding industry is a bit of a fucking... Oh, it's a con, isn't it? But you know yourself yeah. as a comic, someone says to you, hey, I've got a gig, oh yeah, what's the date? Uh, 25th of June. All oh, right, yeah, what's the occasion? You know, is it a gig or whatever? It's a wedding. Oh yeah, nine grand. Like, yeah. is that what you normally go out for? No, but I just don't want to do this gig. Have you do ever it. done a wedding? I've done a wedding. I did a wedding in, uh, where was it? It was that place near Blackburn, uh, Clitheroe. And um, it was for a woman I used to work with. She's lovely. And she said, can you just pretend you're a guest? Sort of chat, mingle with the guests, get to know some anecdotes and stories, and then jump up unexpected with this radio mic I'll give you. And then just sort of like almost like ninja comedy, stand up and just start doing it before That's, the speeches. And I said, 9, yeah. £9,000. I said, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> and I thought, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to turn up and do my normal stuff. And I'm going to do five minutes less than you've asked me to do. And then I'm going to get off. And you're going to think it's all right. And it was. And I got paid and the check got cleared. And it but horrible. And when I got there, I was, it, I don't know Can what I, I charged. Yeah. I didn't even charge that much, you know. I think it was like 500 quid. This was about seven, eight years ago. 500 quid. That gave me palpitations. I know. <laughs> I know. And I was driving there and I was doing a gig anyway. And I was driving there and I was thinking, oh my God. And I, so I had to put a suit on because I had to pretend to be a, you know, a part of the wedding party. And I got there and it was on this big farm and they'd hired one of the original Ferraris. 
for the lads to just rag around the field. And I was like, I should have charged more than 500 quid. Yeah. And then they had to... Got, <laughs> they've got an original got an Ferrari, original Ferrari to yeah. rag around the field. I'll just have 500. Yeah, just 500. Is that all right? They're like, yeah, just throw dinner. it at the pocket. Yeah. And then you spent had, more hiring a car than they did on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> The car's Easily. getting paid more than the entertainment. Honestly. Also, what were the fucking... That's such a weird thing to ask as a comedian. Like, it's hard enough playing a wedding, but you really need to be like, we've got a comedian, and we he's going to come and do his comedy. Because to, like, the old, like, members of the family, some uppity guest yeah. has just got a mic and gone, fuck this, yeah. my, it's my day as well. <laughs> Hiya, guys, how are you? Like, granddad's like, who's this bastard? <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. And, I, and just before me, a gospel choir had done the same thing. They jumped up. Um, but Dave gone around all day writing songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dave, Uncle Dave. <laughs> I love it. I love it. How did they pass it? I tell you, granddad's there going, oh, I didn't know Rachel and Phil knew a whole table of black people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are they from? And then all of a sudden, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. <laughs> and then Sam Avery yeah. Whoopi Goldberg's there <laughs> yeah. yeah And then Sam Avery On the table with a gospel choir Yeah Right Yeah uh, I spent I, sp you <laughs> I spent most of the time Just sitting in the toilet With the lid down Just sitting there Just waiting for the time to pass Because I thought I'm not so <laughs> people I'm not I'm not going to go round And get to know people And then get up And weave some Comedy magic <laughs> In front of people I just hid Like I was doing a Like I was doing A data entry job And I just wanted to get in Get out And I, once I saw that Ferrari I thought oh, Fuck this We got asked the other week Have you ever had any moments That have made you question Whether you wanted to do stand up And Adam was like Because he's been doing it 10 years He's not had many of those moments I've had a few And I've never got anywhere near it But I, there's those moments yeah. Where you are sat in a toilet because you're hiding from the venue because you don't really want to be there, but you've got to stay and you've got to do the gig because you need money to pay for your stupid life not having a real job. Yeah. And in those moments, sat in a toilet, you're like, what am I doing? Should I be a teacher? Like, it is uh, a weird exactly. feeling. I've got, a, I've got an even worse story than that, and it also involves a toilet. And it was doing a gig just before Christmas, and it was for, was it Castleford rugby team, maybe? It was through some promoter. It was about seven years ago. And it was in the afternoon, and it was on that Friday, that last Friday all, all before the, Christmas. All the red flags on in the an afternoon. Process. Yeah, there's not enough red flags in that cup. <laughs> Rugby club. <laughs> and so I turned up. I took a suit with me. I never wear a suit. I hate wearing a suit, but I thought I've got to wear a suit because I've got to assert my dominance. You know what I mean? It's one of them gigs. And uh, I went into this big marquee that's hired, and it was some plumbing company, and they'd booked every single like division of the plumbing company from around the country had all been bussed in to Castleford, which is obviously the epicentre of quality entertainment, as we all know. <laughs> um, it's the Vegas of the Yorkshire North. Plumbers! Yeah. So they, they all turned up. The guy showed me into the room, and he said, uh, there's a mic here, but they won't fucking hear you, because it, it's not set up right, but you'll be all right, won't you? And I was like, <laughs> what I should have done is just go, no, and they just left. I thought, but I needed the money. At the time, I was desperate for the money. So I started talking, no one was listening. And instead of just dying with dignity, like a champ, I decided to try and make the gig work for me. Because I'd seen other comics do it, where they kind of jump on tables and move chairs. And, <laughs> and I thought, what a victory oh, wow. this would be. What a victory. <laughs> Listen, I'm an Everton fan, but this is 3-0 down against AC Milan. But instead of getting 3 all and winning on penalties, I lost 8-0. It was <laughs> fucking horrendous. Because I jumped on a table. And, uh, you sent the keeper up for the corner and it got caught. Yeah, 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 got caught on the breakaway. <laughs> and the ref gave four goals for each goal they scored. It was horrendous. <laughs> Jumped on a table similar to this, probably not as sturdy, so I was wobbling a little bit, you know, mentally, spiritually, and, and literally. And But the, the worst thing about it was I'd get them for five seconds and then they'd lose interest because the bar was open and it was free. And I did 45 minutes in different parts of the room and died the worst death. When I got changed, jumped back in the car, driving back, and I stopped at one of the services on the M62. I can't remember which one. And I had a coffee because I had a gig that night. And I'm having a coffee. And I was there for about an hour. And then I thought, right, I'll just go for a wee. And then I'll, I'll get back in the car and go to my other gig, the proper gig. I'm in the toilet. And uh, I'm just washing my hands. And some woman is in the toilet in an afternoon in the men's toilet in the services. And she just looks at me. And she just goes, shit, comedian. <laughs> and they were the Liverpool branch that were all on the way home. And then they came out the cubicles fucking surrounding me in the bogs of the services. Shit. And they're all going, mate, you were shit. And I was just going, what is going on? I'm getting heckled about 40 miles away from the gig. <laughs> oh, no. Three hours after the show. There's comedians who ever get heckled at a welcome break. <laughs> it was, oh, it was when you're awful. off the, pro when you're not there, out of the venue, yeah. you're like, don't, you can't call me shit. No. 
When you're in the room, you're like, yeah, I was shit. You yeah. can't call me shit. When you're on the M62, you think, I must be free of it. I've yet, yet to have a wee in the services without feeling a bit anxious, like I've got PTSD. Like, well, like so, the same like people so are going to be there again. Yeah. Ah. Be, yeah. just, just following you from, just from a closed seven. cubicle. You were shit in yeah. Castleman. <laughs> <laughs> but I had no arguments because I was, you know. Is that the worst gig you've ever had? Yeah, but I'd say so. Not The gig was bad, but the, the sort of hecklers following me down the motorway. I mean, that's pretty bad, isn't it? But then I did another wedding once where the bride and groom, I've only ever done two weddings, and the bride and groom, and I was dying, and there was kids running around, and it was just horrendous. And the bride and groom were sat on the front. No one else wanted this except them. And I could see they were holding each other's hands, and with every minute that I was on stage, they were gripping each other's hands tighter and tighter and just... Like, yeah. they look like I'd ruined their Whenever day. Whenever I get asked by a bride and groom, because <laughs> it'll happen at tour shows or maybe after a show at Hot Water or the store or something, they'll come up and go, this is the second, third time we've seen you. We're getting married next year. We'd love you to do it. And I always go, I know you would, but your nan won't. Yeah. Okay? So my fee, and I've said this before on here, is £10,000 because I am happy to ruin the best day of your life yeah. for 10 grand. Exactly. But any less than that, not doing and it. But Not we've had it. a new add-on. This is that's Adam's wedding price, and that's been fixed for a while. But we'll do a have a word live show for five. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's all right. I'd be up for that. <laughs> I'd do it for two hundred quid just for the story. Oh my god! Put it, put it out on Patreon. And this is where Uncle Brian tried to stab Adam. You're the day. Shall we? Um, Shall we call it and have a little intervalis? Have an intervalis, and then we have questions from the peoples. Questions from peoples. What's happening, guys? Are you on board the CBD oil train yet? Whether you are or you aren't, you should head to supremecbd.uk, one of the official sponsors of the Have Away podcast, and get yourself some premium CBD oil product from gummy bears to the oil itself. This stuff has got a million uses. It can help with anxiety. It can help you sleep. It can help with aches and pains. It's really, really brilliant. It's been helping me and a lot of other people. Now, if you go to supremecbd.uk and use the special promo code, code WORD, that's W-O-R-D, you get 30% off every and you order, and they slide us a little bit of money for sending you their way. That's how sponsorship works. They sponsor the podcast. We push you their way. It's a money game, baby, but you're going to get money off your CBD. And what's better than money off? Nothing. Go get it. Supreme CBD. Dot UK. Welcome back to the podcast. Just a really, really bad Shrewsbury accent. I think that was a pretty good Shrewsbury I'm accent. Really, I'm really bad at Shrewsbury. So it comes out, whatever that came out as. I wasn't <laughs> intending it, so comp. Have you visited the <laughs> Abbey? <laughs> I Jeez. love Shropshire. <laughs> <laughs> Shropshire through and through. I, I also have a wife from Oswest G. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, now, uh, when you come on today, Sam, I posted on our Patreon page, and as I do, sort of every now and then, when we've got a guest coming in, and I ask our listeners, have you got any questions specific to this guest? So, for example, we had Jamie Webster on. I was like, do you want to know anything about the music industry? He's worked with Liverpool Football Club. We had Paddy Pimblett on. And we was like, do you want any MMA questions that he might not have asked before? And obviously, with you coming on, a few years ago, you started blogging about parenting because yeah. you were... You, you found out your wife was pregnant. I remember you telling me about that on the drive back from the Edinburgh yeah. Festival as well. And you, uh, you 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 just started a blog about it and it went really, really big, completely viral, thousands and thousands of people watching it and reading it and it got you a book deal. So I was like, let's get some parenting questions. Yeah. And then you sat down before and I was like, <laughs> I've got some parenting questions. <laughs> and you looked at me like I'd said, I've got some pictures of you uh, of your, your dead relatives here. So I'm going to look at these. <laughs> Adam, before we start recording, I've given them up for adoption. So yeah. <laughs> let's just jump past that. <laughs> so I, you you sort of carved, carved out a niche as a comedian for yourself. Yeah. And I, 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 I sense from what you've said before, that you're a little bit tired of it. Yeah, I just think it's 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 been great for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, and when I started doing it, I suppose it hit the nail on the head. I started blogging, I started writing stuff. So I wasn't making videos for online. I was just writing articles and blogs, yeah. basically, and really got into that and enjoyed that. And 
Um, it did really well online and stuff went viral and you get all these followers and then you're able to tour and it's that exciting. So it's the did. reason I had kids. Yeah, exactly. I just yeah. thought, fuck it, it's work for Avery. It's work, it's, if it's work for him, <laughs> I'm it can that. work for anyone. <laughs> but then you didn't have twins, you see, so that was ah. the extra niche. But then, so then I did one tour called The Lay and Parents and that was great fun, amazing to do a tour. I mean, that's all I've ever wanted to do. And then did I actually remember you saying that as well. Mm, yeah. Because... My first Edinburgh, which was when I did Big Value, Sam gave me a lift home. I don't know way back. Obviously, you've got like three, four hours to just talk shit. Um, and probably the longest time we'd ever spent together. We'd yeah. worked together loads and we were yeah. mates and that. And you helped me out a lot when I started because you used to run the essentially the Liverpool version of Beat the Frog, which was yeah. Raw High Raw. Um, and, like you, the, and you also did the kids' comedy one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. That was a tough gig. Yeah. <laughs> Teenagers doing their own stand up and then you closed. Yeah, that, that was an interesting one. Dan, yeah. don't worry, it's a uh, it's fifty quid on a Thursday afternoon. Okay, that's how Lewis Calvert started. You know, yeah, he did that course. Yeah, um, but I remember on the way back, and because you talk for like like comedians do for hours, I remember asking you sort of what your ambitions were because I remember that drive so yeah. well because you said your ambition was to just do a tour, like yeah. a successful tour where you're turning up to whatever size venues you've booked in and you either sold out or as close to it as possible. And you also told me you were about to start blogging. And I was yeah. like, just do it. Because something will happen. You're better yeah. than the guy who's not blogging. And then you started the blog and that got you your talk. Yeah, it was, it was mad. Sick. It was mad and it was like a bit of a whirlwind really. But I was so committed to like making sure everything, this particular blog came out every Tuesday. And people used to go absolutely bananas over it and it was so exciting and people would message me if the blog was 20 minutes late are you okay are the kids all right it's like <laughs> yeah just i haven't finished editing it or i haven't thought of the right word to make that joke really you know zing or whatever um so then i did that first tour did the book did the second tour called toddlergeddon which was like the next one I haven't even finished that tour yet because of the pandemic gonna finish that this year my kids are six makes no sense <laughs> <laughs> makes no sense <laughs> Um, I'm so checked out of that show. I've, five, I've forgotten the show. I've got to relearn it to do it five or six times. Fucking hell. If you've got tickets, I'm sorry. I will put in a performance. My program. life with five-year-olds. Yeah. They're yeah. fucking 23. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Genuine question on that. Have you thought about just fucking it off and just adding those dates to your next tour and carrying the tickets over? I think there's so many people who've bought tickets who've messaged me to say, I can't wait to see this because, you know, we... Well, they, they did say we are going through the same thing. But again, their kids will be old, older as well. So I think, it's, yeah. I... I had a conversation with my agent the other day because we're looking to book my tour in for next year, like February to April, new tour. And he was like, oh, and uh, the Glee have been in touch because you had a date with them uh, in Nottingham that there's still valid tickets for. And there's uh, one in Brighton, a comedian, that there's still valid tickets for that got cancelled uh, because of the pandemic from your last tour show. So we'll put them in for this year. You just do that tour show. And, then we'll, and I went, just put those tickets onto the next tour. Because I never want to say those words ever yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. Certainly not in that order. Exactly. Like, Have but, to do a rusty version of a tour that was singing a year and a half ago. It's, yeah. it's just not, and also, that like most of the material from that is on the special I put out. So the people who've bought the tickets, if they've bought tickets to see you live, they're probably going to watch the special you put out. They've seen it. I don't want to take money off people. Just give them a ticket to me next door. Yeah. And we'll sort that, yeah, because yeah. also I've recorded this tour, but I've not been, I've not been able to put it out yet because people might still see it. You've so called it of... Geddon and yeah. it's about a phase of the yeah. kids' lives. You can't really miss it, can you? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I suppose for those people, they're like, hang on, we've missed a chunk of the it's story. the theme of the show. So, yeah. uh, uh, But I suppose looking forward for next year, I think I've just got to that point where I'm like, I've talked about parenthood. I think we've done that. I think yeah. that's bit. I think I've... I've delved as deep into all aspects of that as I could possibly do. And also because my kids are six, it's like, I don't really want to be talking in depth about their personal traits, which form yeah. quite a lot of the, the first couple of shows. Because you're like, the kids now, they're going to school. You don't want, you don't want to go, yeah. hey, my kids are not beds. You know what I mean? Because that's really, you know, not, so not great. You, you've drained the parent thing dry. Absolutely no more about parenting. So I have got one parenting question. That's cool. <laughs> You're <laughs> That's done. The, yeah. You're done with parenting. But these people aren't. Yeah. I like this one. So we'll do this one and then we'll move on to some absolutely non-topical stuff. I'm quite interested to see how you both take this because you're both parents and I famously... I'm not. But um, some of his takes on parenting are vintage <laughs> Adam Rowe. <laughs> well, I told Dan that he should use a cage to train his daughter. 
to yeah. stop being so loud. In you the don't morning. need you don't need any more. You don't need to hear any I more. Do. That's the vibe. I need to know how big the cage would be because uh, uh, you don't get it too big because then they get anxious. Right, because there's too much space. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. need to like, keep them small, the yappy cabinet. type dog cage. Okay, yeah. for, <laughs> for a four year old. <laughs> <laughs> so this is some mouse. Uh, one of one of the the top lads. Yeah, been ranking him for a long time. Not sure how old his bin lids are, meaning your kids, but this is for you as well, Dan. Uh, or even why I've gone all fucking cockney slags. <laughs> That's literally what he's written. Um, <laughs> but my 10-year-old daughter has been a right little argumentative, gobby, downright disrespectful cow to her mum recently. <laughs> I'm pretty chilled out, and obviously I'm having to get involved with their arguments. To one, give some discipline to the daughter. Two, try and calm the wife down. And three, shut the fucking both of them up from screaming and shouting at each other to give my bastard ears a rest. I've tried taking all their electronics away and grounding her, etc. But I feel like I'm going to volley the little shit through the fucking window or hand it over to the McCanns to take on holiday. <laughs> Any suggestions on what I can do to help this situation? Cheers, lids, mouse. Over to you, oh, gentlemen. Th- that scares me about the future. Terrifying, Because I'm it? so far away from that. Me too. My daughter is so cute. And if you go, don't do that, she's going, oh, sorry, daddy. Like yeah. a ten year old going, No, fuck you as well, Mum. <laughs> that that I want that to be thirty years away. Yeah. But I know it's not. Because if she's if she's got half the eloquence that, that he has, he's in trouble because he's that's a really nicely way to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's some real nice like bangers in there. Yeah. And yeah. threats. He's a bit of a weird with mouse. Some of yeah. our listeners uh failed their sats, but mouse, uh yeah, he uh, he, he he can write. He can- <laughs> Especially when they're doing have a words because they get really impassioned because it's like, can you have a word with this person in my life that's really pissing me off and I'm fucking really pissed (laughs) off? And then this happened. We got one from Leeds the other day, which was just, you felt the passion in it, but there wasn't a comma or full stop in sight. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking, 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 (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ. (laughs) Brilliant. But that's Leeds. But anyway, um, I think with the taking of the electronic devices away, again, that's something I'm not at yet, but... I've done it with the telly when I've gone, right, the telly's going off. You've done something wrong, the telly's going off. Who am I really punishing there? It's me, innit? <laughs> now I've got to play with them. Now I've got to be creative in the garden and build something, which I like doing, but not all the time. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Sometimes you just want to watch the chase, don't you? Exactly. Oh, wait, what exactly. time of year is it that you are turning the telly off? Oh. Because if it's the middle of December, middle of January, and it's dark outside at like four o'clock, and you're like, right. No screen time. Yeah. That is a long fucking day where you have to entertain them. We are. In the summer, you could be like, screen time, go and play in the garden. But in the winter, it's brutal. But why don't you just like lock them in a room and then you carry on watching? Why don't you just put them in the kitchen where there's no telly? There's knives in the kitchen, isn't there? And scissors and, and, and a microwave and all that sort of stuff. They could build a bomb, couldn't he? That's good. He nice. could, you know. I, 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 Bathroom? Bathroom's all right. The, the window opens a bit too wide. You see, when you become a parent, you start to like, you become risk assessments, like Bleach. savvy. Bleach. Bleach. That's any, they could get stuck in the U-bend if they're trying to escape that way. <laughs> I like your, your mind goes into overdrive. Well, it's the fact, most dangerous. Kids in a garage is one of the most scary uh, things you'll ever see. Yeah, You're like, oh my But God. a great band. But if, if, <laughs> <laughs> if they, if they, went, they went to her mum's once a couple of years ago and I got all the knives and all the scissors out and I just put them right near the edge of the kitchen top and I was like, that feels good to just put them there. <laughs> it was like the knives were having a little holiday of just looking over the edge because they're so far out of everyone's reach normally. <laughs> but it's like, we have a policy in our house with screen time. Screen time starts again when you swap screens. So like, telly goes off, you've had two hours, have the iPad for a bit. <laughs> and then, and then have, you, have you had my phone or you had your mum? phone i have my phone for the bit difference i mean we've got eight phones which yeah. is great we're like one of those boff farms we just got them all stuck up along the wall right no more playstation get the xbox on lad. yeah i yeah. love it how playstation this- 3 goes off playstation 4 is on god i love it how the 10 year old and the mum are, are benny and are like he's like i don't know what's going on here but it's not me she's pissed off at it's her mum like it feels like what are you even meant to do with that as a dad like you you mum's kicking off with ten year old, ten year olds kicking off with mum. How do you become the like Switzerland of that surely situation? On a case by case basis, because sometimes I reckon you know the missus is going to be bang out of order. She's taking a day out on her daughter. You know what I mean? And sometimes the ten year old's just being a little cunt because she's ten, and sometimes ten year olds are cunts. But you've got I to pick your words so carefully because you could say something in the wrong tone of voice 
to your missus oh, or your yeah. 10-year-old daughter. And then you've got both of them. And it's like Kofi and Nan has gone into a UN meeting and just got his knob out. <laughs> and gone, fucking there's your solution to your problems. It's like, it's not He was help. well known for that. Well, that's, well, why wasn't he? He, that's why he retired. Uh, uh, here, yeah. Allegedly. So I, I, I don't know what, I, I think I'd probably just, what you're supposed to do is just talk and listen and try and get people. But I spend half my time telling my kids to stop shouting. And as I'm saying, stop shouting, I'm shouting my head off. <laughs> Which is just not Stop! a good to... Shout out! Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But Dad. We do that all the time. All the time. Yeah. I think he just needs to get, like, maybe he just needs to keep his wife and his daughter in separate rooms at all times. Or separate cages. <laughs> <laughs> maybe well, open a club. It, it's hard for you to get beyond, like, it, pr- imprisonment of some sort, isn't it? Like, room locked, cage locked, separate cages. Is the garden prison? If you make it into a kennel, sort of. <laughs> oh, just didn't, hey, Adam, we've made your kennels up in your garden. Didn't know you had uh, eight dogs. I don't. <laughs> but I've got a wife and loads of kids. Well, my, my advice there, lad, is take a case by case. Um, and if your daughter's the one being a fucking arsehole, you know, so it's your job to make sure she, she stops that, innit? You Do made ex- her an arsehole. Yeah. It's your fault. Yeah, it's your she DNA. She can't possibly be an arsehole. If you've raised her to be an asshole, but what you can do as well, you can. F- <laughs> it's not wrong, is he? You, but sometimes assholes just because that's the thing. They, <laughs> your kids are like part of you, but they're also part of the environment and the, and the rules that you try and in place on them. In place yeah. is yeah, the yeah, word, yeah. is it? Implement. You know what I mean, I'm a t- implement. Yeah, I'm a terrible parent. They're talking bollocks in ours. But <laughs> if you you could do all of those things, and they could still become. A mass murderer. I think from the tone of that email, I think that's a household where everyone gives as good as they get. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You just read the tone of the email. It wasn't like, dear sirs, please answer a concerning issue we're having in our lovely home. My wife and I are both yoga instructors and we're having a very <laughs> difficult time with our youngest, who's a cunt. You know, like, it's not, I think that's a family where they're like, you, know, you fucking make your own cornflakes, you cunt. Yeah. I think it's a... Uh, do you know what you can do in, in that situation? I don't know if it'll work. We could say to them, what would you do if I was you? Like, how would you resolve this situation? And then put it on them. And then they offer a solution. And then you just scream at them for that. Because you disagree with that as well. <laughs> That'd be great, that. Doing that with a 10-year-old. So, how do you think I should approach the situation? Well, Daddy, I want to stick stickle bricks up my bum hole. Well, you well, back I'm... on. <laughs> Let's all have an ice cream. Major problem with down. 10-year-olds. That's 10. Yeah. Major problem with 10-year-olds. The amount of 10-year-olds that are turning up at school with stickle bricks <laughs> up why, their bum. That's why you never I see them anymore. I cannot wait for Adam to be a parent. When he's like, listen, Sam Love, we've got to be ready. She's nine now. She's nearly in the stickle bricks up the arse. So what the fuck are you on about? I have no idea. But get a bigger cage because we need to throw stickle bricks in the cage. I don't know. Hide the Meccano. Big face is wrong, you know. <laughs> Mental. Mental. Oh, Shall we uh, go to the other side of the of life? Bef- uh, this lad's uh, got in touch, um, and he said he's asking for <laughs> advice as well, but he's a young single man. He says, I just recently got out of a two-year relationship, and I'm not sure what to do. I'm currently at college in Leeds doing an electrician course and want to get some advice is if to stay single for the next couple of years or try and look for the one. Obviously, I'm feeling shit since the breakup, but I'm slowly getting over it and need your advice, Lids. Love the pod. Keep it up. So, I have a two-year relationship and he, he wants to know if he should just stay single or if she should uh, look for love, look for the one. What would you do? He's a young man, Sam. He's a young man. Gotta stay single, man. Stay single as long as you can. And the, the one will ever. arrive because if you go looking for the one. You know when people start going out with someone, and I hear it all the time, people say, oh, when I met my boyfriend, he said he wasn't looking for a relationship. It's like, well, that's what you want. You don't want, when I met my boyfriend, he was desperate. He was dying <laughs> yeah. to go out with someone because he just split up with someone who belittled his confidence. And then I walked into his life. You don't want that. Yeah, you, you want- don't want, you don't want, I was the sixth day out of that week. Yeah. He was honestly sometimes doubling up on the dates. <laughs> he was so mad to commit. You don't honestly. Want that at all. He asked to see my credit rating that first night we met. He asked if I wanted kids before the fucking main course yeah. turned up. Yeah, you want it to chill out a bit. Definitely. And also you yeah. want you want you want to be with someone who uh appreciates you and also gives you shit when you're being a dickhead as well. But that's a different issue. But like with 
you know, when you meet someone and you think, oh, I think we're going to be together for it. This is it now. Yeah. You know, this is great. It's only then you realise, oh, no, all the other stuff was fucking hard work, wasn't it? And like, Horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been, I went out with a girl years ago and uh, <laughs> she basically... <laughs> This is so she, funny when we're accidentally talking about Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know when you meet a girl? She's and Adam's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Sorry. got PTSD and did he's you, in the chat. Did you say accidentally? I was totally getting the sort of. I went on with a girl years ago, and I thought, oh, this is it. This is definitely it. But uh, right early on in the warning signs of this, she was just trying to change me. She was like, oh, I, d- I don't normally go out with guys like you. I was like, what do you mean? And then she was like, why don't you get your hair cut differently? I was probably going bald. I should have just shaved it off. She was like, why don't you dress differently? Why don't you listen to different music? And I was like, yeah, there, there it is, the red flag. But it it was it was foggied by her eyes. She was fit. She had nice boobs. Oh, dear. That yeah. sounds worrying. Yeah. I know that you are a man of honour. <laughs> that sounds worrying. <laughs> <laughs> is that Hamilton? It is. Oh, man. It's good, isn't it? Changed my life. Yes! Oh, no. Oh, no. Press the button, Changed man. my life. Press the button. Right, let's have a fuck. You know, you know, that, <laughs> you know that car journey oh, we had where I said, I just oh. I just want to write a tour. <laughs> and I want to write a fucking musical. Yeah. I want to write a musical about the American Civil War. Yeah. About Hamilton, basically. Oh, I'm five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. I've been, I've been there. I've been working out, listening to the soundtrack oh, in the kitchen. I, I, if I've got a long drive, yeah. I put it on. It's two and a half hours, brilliant. Exactly. And it's you, like a podcast. It's like a musical podcast. It's, it's, and there's no, there's no, you know no weak bits. About the original pre- presidents of the United oh. States. Have you learned stuff about? I have. Oh really? Yeah. That no, must be an exciting. Involved. No, he was fucking working. You got him. Go back to work. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, great, yeah. Sam loves it as well. Yeah. Love it. It's great. Um, back to work. <laughs> you bunch of fannies! <laughs> I can show you the world. world. So sorry to bother Mate, if you've been in a two-year home, relationship and you're a young man, and I came here don't worry alone. about don't worry about finding My the one straight away. Wrong. Listen, you better cut you him just off soon. Watch Hamilton and just keep fucking touching yourself to American. I don't have the means to musical theatre. Sam like Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. Did she, she has did to. Did she like Hamilton? She has yeah. to. She's not like obsessed with it like I am, but she she's she hasn't seen it live, which I have three times. Have you seen it live? <laughs> three times. Oh wow. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll text you later. We'll talk about it on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Do that. Do that. <laughs> seen it twice in London and once on Broadway. Oh, oh god. Oh, so jealous. I ne- oh I, but god. I never thought I'd be like this, and clearly Dan didn't, or else he wouldn't have had me on. Oh. I I might have enjoyed it, <laughs> but I am not watching yeah. this shit on purpose now. Same. Because he's, he's made it, so I hate this thing. And I actually like history. Yeah. But it makes me ha- it's making me hate revolutionary America. <laughs> oh, it's really good, though, isn't it? It's, it's very good. It's very, very long. I though. would highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Find a My wife. Advice. Find a wife straight away and watch <laughs> Hamilton with her. My advice Date him. a girl. Get engaged after three months secretly and not tell anyone, and then watch Hamilton all the time. It doesn't matter what you do, because if you get in a relationship, if it's not the one, doesn't matter because it'll end anyway. And if you if you try and stay single, if the one comes along, you'll end up together forever anyway. That's just how it happens. You can't control it. Do whatever you want. Shag whatever will let you shag it, and then you know eventually one will go. Do you want to shag me forever? And that's that way. Taylor's all this time. <laughs> that is actually the opening scene from Hamilton. You know when I realised. Oh, no, why Hamilton. have you said that? <laughs> no, because John John Adams is getting a blowjob. Yeah, John <laughs> Adams is getting a blowed off blowjob off George Washington. That's right, isn't it? And like, <laughs> I hate Hamilton. <laughs> He's just singing it. That's the best. Yeah. So. Oh no, that's the actual start. Do you know when you I realised my wife was the one for me? Was when we'd been going out for a few months and we went to watch. Uh, we were both trying to pretend we were a little bit more cultured than perhaps we are. And uh, we said, oh, let's go to Stratford for the weekend and go and watch some Shakespeare. At the RSC, At the darling. RSC. So we got tickets for King Lear. At the Swan. Three and a half hours long. The interval was an, an hour and 45 in and we both pretended we were still enjoying it. And it was only at the end when we were just beyond, like being battered into submission by this, this performance. Like not in a good way, just like came out and she just went... I think the lights came up and she put her hand on my knee and just said, that was fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, 
If I had a ring in my pocket now, I would be on one knee because you are the woman of my dreams. Because it was bollocks. Let's. I know, I know Shakespeare is this blah blah blah, but it was fucking crap. There is something beautiful about being with a girl who's stunning and you you get on well and everyone's like, she's so beautiful. She's so loving. Sometimes she's like, oh, I fancy a KFC. You're like, yeah. yes, that's well, my smell that. fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question? When do you think you should ask a girl oh, dear. on a second date? Oh. Right. What? To, to, uh, to, you've got to have a first date first. Yeah. Don't ask for the second date before you've asked for the first date. <laughs> yeah. Because that <laughs> seems a bit needy. I think that is definitely. Yeah. That might We're be. going two dates with me. Yeah. I think this guy is the kind of guy that's asking to sign some form of tenancy before the first date. He's like, too much. Should I just try and find the one? But yeah, I think that's a really good techers. That. Yeah. And also, I think you've got to wait at least till the next day. If it's gone really well, wait till the day after the first date because I used to never like a girl who would text me. As, I'd, I was, as I was walking away from her at the end of the first date, a little kiss. Oh, yeah, we'll do it again because you say that to everyone. Walking away, text, really enjoyed that. I was like, fucking hell, you, you, you stood there. Yeah, yeah. And now you're texting me. Yeah. You're going to be scratching at my front door, aren't you? It is intense. Yeah. I asked Sam on a second date. On, on the, the first date. On the first date. And I came back from the toilet. And so we were sat opposite each other. She's on, like, the bench thing, and I'm on a chair across the table. And I sat next to her on the bench and asked her on a second date. And then neck the head off. <laughs> I want to take the piss, but I did exactly the same thing with Laura. I was like, I really, I had no chill. I was like, I think you are fucking great. And I think we should do this again. She was like, yeah. And that's great, isn't I didn't it? think it was that weird though. And then Sam was like, no, I liked it. But I do think like most people would wait. But can I say everything that you do with your partner that you end up with, if you did that with anyone else is massively creepy. Like yeah. sending flowers to the work after the first day because it was magical and you know yeah. you're going to be together forever. That's great. But if they didn't like you, you're just a fucking moron. Yeah. Like, yeah. Turn it's, up the- it's easy to look back at a successful relationship. But the relationship that you're still in, any of the story of how you got to that point is like, yeah, but it worked, didn't it? Like, of yeah. course, when you end up, when it doesn't work, it's overkill. So when people go, oh, that's way too soon. Well, it's not, is it? Because you and Stan are still together and it wasn't too soon for Laura. But I think there is an element of like, once you get to a certain age and you're not fucking about playing games, if you really like someone, there's nothing wrong with going, I think you're great and I would really like to do this again. Why be like, no? Because what you're saying is by not doing it, you're like, uh, if I say it, I'm going to put her off and I want to just keep her at arm's length so she's still keen, so I don't want to overkill it. Like, if you really like someone, fuck it. Yeah. Tell them. Get yeah. stuck in. I just got, I, in your 30s, yeah. I just got to the point where I was like, there's no, I've got no Take chill anymore. Gamble. The second time I seen Sam was on a night out where we sort of bumped into each other and I was hammered and said, <laughs> this is a quote, I'm not going to see anyone else. And I don't remember this, but she told me, <laughs> the second time I seen it, I'm not going to see anyone else. You can, <laughs> but I will be gutted. <laughs> I remember, I remember, I remember you tell... <laughs> The best thing about this relationship is I've been with, I've been, like watched Carl react to it. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, you do what you want. We're watching Carl's face like, fucking a lot. Calm down. Three months later, you should already shouldn't have asked her for a fucking second date. <laughs> you date a girl in January, you fuck her off till June. <laughs> text her once and then ignore her till Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Sounds about That's what you did, didn't it? Yeah. That's not what I did, but yeah. Oh, mate, the the... Guys, I know everyone sort of would like to meet someone, whatever, and but going out to try and find a relationship at a young age, you're like, you are just going to end up in some crap, like fake, trying to be a relationship. Just got to let things roll a bit more naturally, aren't you? Do you know when you said then going out to try and find, I, I, I paused then because you said to find a relationship, but in my head I was like trying to find a girl and I seen the person, I seen his haircut. It's gelled, it's spiked up. He's got a pinstripe top on, he's got boot cut jeans, and oh, he's got his dad's shoes on. Brown shoes on. Brown shoes on, yeah. Brown shoes with like really dark, bluey, grey jeans, pinstripe top, and like. It's short sleeve as well. Yeah, short sleeve. Like, nerd jersey. Do you know? And he dances with his shoulders. And you can smell his aftershave before you see him. Yeah, it's oh. jupe. Coming, yeah, it's coming down the corner. Yeah. <laughs> got jupe on. And now when you lean in for a kiss, people have got fucking iPhones all around you. So you could be the cunt on one of those viral videos where someone's accidentally filming you and then they can see you lean in for a kiss and a girl go. 
I've seen those videos. You're like, oh, cringe. Oh, I've probably been that guy. Yeah. But the fact that there's now videos to record, guys going, oh, I'm going in for it. And then she goes, no, you're fucking not. <laughs> oh, have have you ever been on a date, though, where you've got there and you've literally, like, within 60 seconds gone, no, this is not working. But you've got to kind of do the time. You can't get off. You can get off early, but you can't get off straight away, can you? Oh, you've just got to do the you've time. You've got to do the time. Oh. You can't be like, okay, uh, no point to this because yeah. that's the, the worst the, yeah. punt move ever. And I've done it where, and then I've had like five or six pints in, and I'm going, oh, she's all right actually. <laughs> and then you're thinking, I'm listening to Drunk Sam now. <laughs> Drunk Sam is not going to decide my future. Drunk Sam is a moron and I'm makes all think terrible if I've decisions. Ever been on a date like that. So at the start of the day, I was not keen, but I feel amazing. By the third Jaeger bomb, I thought she was all right. <laughs> I'm over here. You're talking to someone else. <laughs> Never let drunk Sam arrange the second date. No. Well, now I'm here. I think we should put two, three, and four in. Yeah. You know? Get me diary out. Yeah. <laughs> Got a gig in uh, Castleford first. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's an afternoon. Uh, um, yeah. Fucking I've hell. I've done that loads. I've had, I had a girl once who, who basically turned up and told me that she lies about everything. Like that was the first. Their opening gambit was that she li I lie, but I just need you to know I lie about everything. Everything I say is a lie. Um, and me, me and my last boyfriend lied, and I was like, yeah, exactly. I said, do you want a drink? She was like, yeah, and I was like, do you? <laughs> so I was like confused, but that's <laughs> is that is that real? Yeah, yeah. What if that was a lie. That, that what what I just said was a lie, or what she said what was a lie. Said exactly. Was a lie. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, How do we know you're not lying? <laughs> That's like a girl turning up and going, just want to tell you, it's opposites day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want a gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I do want sex. Enjoy that conundrum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that'll stand up in court. <laughs> uh, she said she was lying. So when she said, no, anyway. Um, but that, I, I lie just... about everything. So just sat across from you, straight face, not like having a laugh, just. Yeah. I lie about absolutely everything. And, uh, yeah. Put it this put way, it, if you were writing a sitcom and you came up with that idea, you'd bin it because it's shit. Yeah. But that was real life. It's like, what are you doing? Like, why are we doing yeah. this? Why? One of those non-believable ones where you're like, no one's going to buy that that happened. And it's, it, it was just, it was, it was, it was poor. Oh. But again, a couple of drinks, it was like, fuck it, I'm going to start lying. And I just started being, <laughs> I'm a stunt man. We yeah. can lie together. <laughs> yeah. I don't want sex either. <laughs> Drunk yeah. Sam. We can all lie. Yeah. <laughs> Drunk Let me Sam. tell you about living as a black man <laughs> <laughs> in Mozambique, where I definitely live. <laughs> and then I moved to Muggle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shall we do a? Shall we do a have a, a have a word? A wordy wordy. Because it's traditional. Um, it's time to have a word oh, you can't hear. So we've got one in from Emma. Oh, oh right, yeah. Uh, who says? Hey, Aaron and Dave. I've been thinking about sending this in as I have a word for a while, and now it is getting too much. I need you to intervene for me. Hubby will hear this before me if it gets played, so please have a word. Well, that means he's a patron and she isn't. I love a Why good bath. <laughs> I love a good bath. I probably have a, a good pamper in the bath at least three nights a week, and Hubby, actual name is Dave, loves it too, because when I'm in there, he can play cod in peace. However... Every time I say I'm going to go for a bath, he suddenly decides he needs a poo. This only ever seems to be exactly when I say I'm about to head up to the bath. This means the bathroom fucking stinks when I'm planning to have a nice relaxing soak. He then goes on the PlayStation and I'm left hanging around upstairs until the smell is dissipated. And not only that, but he also doesn't spray any air freshener and pulls the door closed behind him. Now, if we're uh, mates in a house, I get closing the door because you'd wa not want the upstairs to stink or anything. But when I'm going in there after him, it's like being hit with a wall of bad smell. At least do me the courtesy of spraying some air freshener, which I leave next to the toilet, by the way, and opening the door and window so the smell can get out a bit quicker. Keen to hear your thoughts on this one, Lids. Hope you can have a word for me. Cheers. That's from Emma. Okay. There's two things here. Okay. There's two things. First of all, when you've got to go, you've got to go. And as long as he's not shitting in the bath, you should be grateful. And <laughs> Be grateful. Never, never ask an IBS sufferer for any sort of attack on a pooer. And also, she is so naive because he is absolutely doing this on purpose to get more he's, time to get more time on COD. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's going right. She's in the bath, so I will get bath plus whatever time she has to stand around waiting for shit smell to go. If I knew it was like bath night, if she's doing it three nights a week, if I knew it was bath night, like she didn't have one last night, I'd be in. Horrendous shit all day. Cheese. 
I've beaten oh. Guinness. Guinness, so much dairy, spicy stuff. Figure and rolls. I would absolutely. <laughs> so I'm just telling us so much about his like <laughs> bowels. Fig rolls, Adam. Great. Say fig rolls Honestly. as well. I would destroy that bathroom and I would accidentally on purpose even forget to flush. So you'd, you'd get the extra time before she even noticed that there's still shit in the bog. And then you've got the flush and then you've got the extra time. I tell you what. If I, I wouldn't be playing, I'd be playing FIFA, but I could go from zero to qualify for the weekend league by the time she's out of the bath. <laughs> She'd get out like a prune, yeah. like swamp thing. <laughs> that is the thing, though, if they're in the bath, you get to do what you want. Enjoy a nice long six-hour bath if you want. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. But pooing before is weird, isn't it? I, I don't think you could leave what you just described unflushed. I get the theory. But I actually, I would class that as a crime against humanity. Like, that is, to do what you described and then go, I am then not going to flush. But many Eventually, geniuses have trouble being understood in their own time. Yeah. It's an, call it I think you're going to get divorced. <laughs> you are going to get, like, someone's going to go, I do not need to flush that fucking I think abomination. A court of law would find that to be domestic abuse if you didn't flush something like that. The way, especially if you throw in the fig rolls, which I don't, I'm not sure you would, because that would be too much. We, <laughs> what, I, after? In the toilet? Yeah, 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 just throw them in, in the packet as well. Got anything to eat in the bath log? Yeah. <laughs> Pull them out of there, girl. In the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Who oh. eats in the bath? Not more relaxing than a, a nice soap you while you're eating you the fig roll. Do you want it? Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> pleasure. Do you yeah. ever have your tea in the bath? I don't get baths. I'm... Well, not your tea, but like a butty or something. <laughs> You have a booty in the bath. Do you never have a sandwich in the bath? No, I take a can of Diet Coke sometimes. I find it... Yeah, real... I drink's normal. Oh, a lovely yeah, co a lovely contrast of warm and cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's really difficult to say something like that with Adam's face going, the fuck are you on about, lad? No, I'm not. I, Do you I have like a carbonara in the bath? <laughs> not a carbonara. I've had, I've had a, a bussy. I've had a pizza. A no, bussy? A bussy? No, you don't. You've a bussy in the bath? Got in the bath. The, pizza, the pizza hadn't even been delivered. <laughs> Come up, Imran. I've, I've left the door open. Come up. Tips on the fucking... Yeah. Butties spill. You having a cheesy bath? No, I don't I don't have like a fucking six-inch subway <laughs> with all the lessons falling out. Oh, silly me. I have like an am butty. A pizza in the bath sounds good, though, actually. Pizza in a the pizza. bath? Oh, pizza. Pizza's, Pizza's that's like the most Scarface, acceptable. Isn't it? Like the, <laughs> but when you said tea scary. in my head, you had like a dinner plate. <laughs> That's the least Scarface thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Adam in a bath having a fucking slice of pepperoni, like say hello to my little friend. Yeah, cocaine. The, and the little friend is a dip, isn't he? I've had a, I've had an ambussy. I've had a corned beef butty as well. I've had a pizza. <laughs> corned beef butty. I think the weirdest thing I had was a roast dinner. <laughs> a roast dinner in the bath is fucking press that button, please. <laughs> Absolute fucking nonsense. <laughs> no, I haven't had the roast dinner. And uh, no, <laughs> everyone knew there was a nation going bing, bing, bing. Yeah, oh, God, don't be. Don't. Did I have a cheese board? No, yeah, yeah. Sat there, bit of brie. I've bit never of this this relationship, Emma. I don't know. I know money's tight. You need a downstairs fucking toilet, duck. Yeah, a downstairs toilet, duck. <laughs> I, I heard what I said as well. <laughs> I, I went a bit East Midlands at the end, unnecessarily. It sounds but like yeah, a new downstairs sponsor. Downstairs toilet. Yeah, downstairs. That's what my wife wants. That's all she wants. Like, that's her ambition in life to have her own toilet. So oh, not, I'd fucking not, love to not have to walk up all the way upstairs. But if she him. gets her own toilet, I am won't legally be allowed to use it and the kids won't be allowed and it'll just be a thing. But then I said, well, what if I'm on the toilet? Or the kids on the toilet and someone needs to go. We're going to have to use your box. So the dream is nonsense, love. So the Do dream was actually to have one more toilet than the amount of people that live in the house. That's what you would have to you do. You need five toilets. You need five toilets. Who's got five toilets? In this day if you think about it, we're very touchy about what we do and don't share with each other. But if you had an individual toilet in your house that was like, in your house you had Dan's toilet, Laura's toilet, like Adam's toilet, like that, that sounds ridiculous and opulent, but actually makes total sense. Like... I've got one People of put their naked fucking asses on the seat, their sweaty cracks, and then do the most unthinkable fig roll based shite. And then ten minutes later, you're like, yeah, I need a poo as well, so I'm gonna I'm gonna like uh, it's horrible when you think about it. Individual toilets is the fucking future. Where would guests go? In the Garden. one of the in the one of the two guest but, toilets. Oh, so you'd have a guest you'd have two guest toilets. Yeah, so and, have and, a house and party a with more than two guests. Yeah, and a disabled. It was a shit house party. 
Oh, that's a shit at a house party. Oh, I've got to go. Oh, I've been. I've got to go. Oh, the yeah. worst. You'd have a I've shit been. at a house party. Let's if I need... I would know. Would you rather me have a shit in the toilet at a house party or shit my pants at your house party? Shit your pants at my house party. Are your options? Be a champ and go in the garden. <laughs> you have a Is shit that a hedgehog? <laughs> <laughs> Do you wash after it? Yeah, yeah, get a bath. Yeah. Get a bath, get a roast dinner up. <laughs> Mr. Mr. D. I love how like Carl's from a different point. Actually, when I was in Japan, we only shat once every six days. And we, <laughs> we, had a and we did it in the hills of Nagasaki. <laughs> <laughs> Are you well on the done sh- for not saying Tokyo. Nagasaki is quite nice, actually. Yeah, sure. Good for a shit. Sounds spicy. It's Tokyo and sauce. Hiroshima are my only two uh, Japanese references. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the second one's bleak as fuck. Yeah, both, of yeah. them, both of them got done. Did Tokyo get done? No, he Nagasaki, said Hiroshima Nag- and Nagasaki. Oh, Nagasaki got done as well. No, he didn't, he said, say, he he said, didn't say Nagasaki, he said Tokyo. Oh, did you? I thought you said yeah. Hiroshima. I said Tokyo. Strong bit of fucking OCD <laughs> behaviour there. Where did you say in Japan? I don't know. Where did you say? Hiroshima got atom bombed, didn't it? Yeah. Both of them did. Nuked. But I'm saying, if you can yeah. have a poo at a house party and then wipe it with paper and go and talk to people, you're the free. <laughs> and that, in some way, is worse than what they did to Hiroshima. <laughs> yeah. That in his eyes. Adam is his own personal house party, Hiroshima. <laughs> so is Hiroshima, like, in hus- ha- inhabitable? No, nope. it's literally a... Rebuilt. The, it's one of the biggest cities in Japan. What, what's the other one in like Nagasaki, Ukraine or Chernobyl. whatever? Chernobyl. 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 That's fucked, that gaff, innit? Yeah, because that was a leak. That was a what? That was a leak, wasn't it? That was a That's leak. fucked, that gaff. <laughs> it is though. <laughs> hey, Putin, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, sort that out. Sort the fucking Pluto did, did out. Did you watch the show, Ch- Chernobyl? Oh, no. it looked so bleak. It was bleak as fuck. It was dead good, but what they decided to do was not get people to put Russian accents on. So just talk in their own voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got like Finchie from the office is in there going, this is fucking bollocks. <laughs> this, this, this thing's going to fucking blow. So that's when he said, that's fucked that gaff. It didn't sound that of much of a departure from Chernobyl. Hey, was... That guy has had a decent career oh. from basically being every racist bloke in a northern pub, isn't he? Yeah. Like, yeah. He's done really... F- I'm in fucking Chernobyl. <laughs> um... <laughs> That has been uh, that has been a pod, ladies and gents. Sam, it's been a fucking pleasure talking to you, my friend. Thank you very much. Where Thanks can for everyone me. find you on the old interwebs? Uh, just type in Sam Avery on uh, Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. I've been on TikTok the last like six months, and uh, yeah, you doing all right on TikTok? <laughs> I'm doing all right. It's a bit of a weird place. Some days I love it. Some days I just think this is fucking like a migraine in my pocket. But we're, we're, it's good. <laughs> it's we, good. We've been putting our stuff on TikTok, and it's it's great. Yeah. Some kids went past me the other day. Instead of just coming up to me and saying, are you Sam Avery? They decided to stand behind me and play my own video back at me until I freaked out. And then they went, I thought it was you. And I was like, fuck, this is weird. That's why TikTok makes me a bit nervous. That is really strange. I had someone come up to me in Sam in town the other day. It was a word as original, like one of the OG listeners. And uh, it's, it's quite funny when people come up to you. Because they don't expect to bump into you in the streets. And with this, they're listening to us three, four, five hours a week. So they've got no plan, but they can't not say hello. So they like you see them from like 50 yards away because they make a beeline for you. And they come to, he comes to me and he's like, Adam! <laughs> Sam! <laughs> 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 and and They've just got no idea how to have the conversation with someone they listen to for five hours a week. And I don't know who they are, but because we spend so much time in their ears, they assume I'm going to go, oh, Barry, and I lad. But I don't know who Barry is. So, Adam, yeah. (laughs) It's me. I'm that guy. (laughs) I'm that guy who knows you. (laughs) At least he didn't shout, cha, nasty bitch, which, oh, mate, off the soundboard, we had, cha, nasty bitch, upset me. And just, uh, just a guy called Tom Twistleton. He c- couldn't resist. I think he did it at two gigs. Oh. Just waited, 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 and went, Cha! Upset me! <laughs> Nasty bitch! And you're like, mate, he no. waited. So I was talking about my three year old child yeah. and then shouted, Nasty bitch, upset me. And the rest of the crowd are like, What? Mate, no one else what? knows the reference. No, no one knows. <laughs> um, all right, well, find Sam and uh, play his videos behind him. That'd be great. He loves that. Please. Absolutely loves that. Yeah, find Sam. Not on the internet. <laughs> Just find, find him in real life. Find me Sam. in Calderstones Park. <laughs> Stand behind me. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, 
I am putting my tour together. Oh, there you go. Um, it will go absolute <laughs> priority to patreon.com slash have a weird pod members and then to my mailing list, which you can sign up to at adamrow.co.uk. Filming the DVD in York. That's booked yeah, yeah, in, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Filming the DVD in York. I you, Can I ask you just before you go, have you got a bogey town? <laughs> bogey gigs? town. Yeah, do you know what? I've, I've never had a great time in Oldham. I don't think anyone has. Don't, I don't think people who live in Oldham have. <laughs> so I don't hold it against them. I just feel like there's a real affinity. I, I, I've I been there maybe three times and I, I understand why they don't like it either. <laughs> Both York and Lancaster can rim my bum hole. Uh, so you're filming a DVD in one of those places? Both of them. Gonna oh, be optional. Yeah. Oh, right. It's going to be one way to... The yeah. Rim of the Roses is going to be <laughs> the name of the DVD. Oh, yeah. I've just realised my two hated gaffs are the, the Shires, aren't they? Lancaster Maybe you Shire. could bring them together. Lancastershire! <laughs> and York. Yorkshire. The Shire of York and the Shire of Lancaster. What are you doing? They really are, yeah. Carl's it's just gone. had a <laughs> fucking aneurysm. Off the rails, right at the end. All right. Uh, bye, Felicia. Bye. See you, Sam. Thanks. <laughs>